Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, Ditto, and Boo. The Lucky Pharaohs. It is 4.51 p.m. right now, and Ditto is limping. It appears to be his front right paw, which also appears to be a bit swollen. See this paw right here? Uh, the paw appears to be fine, it's just the leg. His leg, his front right leg appears to be a little bit swollen. And so what happened was I came outside a little while ago and as I was coming out the door, he was walking across the lawn and I noticed he was limping. And I said, oh my gosh, what is going on? Ditto is limping. So I've been observing him and other than limping, he seems perfectly fine. He's been eating dry food out of the feeder. He's been drinking water. He's been jumping up and down on the steps and he has been rubbing all over Hydrox and yeah, I mean, other than him limping on it and other than it appearing a little bit swollen, I'm not noticing him acting any different at all. We have to remember that when Boo was living outside, there were several occasions where he had a limp, uh, similar to Ditto's limp, um, although I don't remember seeing uh, a swollen leg except for his last limp which ended up bringing him inside but the reason why it ended up bringing him inside was because boo was in like a stupor um like he was moving in slow motion he wasn't himself at all um and it ended up that he had an infection now we don't know what's going on with ditto yet uh, it could be a sprain, he could, you know, he could have jumped from a high location and sprained his arm. Uh, it could be from a bite, from a fight, or something like that. However, I can tell you I have not heard any animal fights at all. Normally when cats get in a fight, they're pretty vocal and you do hear it, and I haven't heard anything. However, if it did happen while I was away yesterday and the day before, then I wouldn't have heard it. Um, however, I did see him earlier today and did not notice anything odd. I honestly think um, he did something today because I think I would have noticed it earlier. It's pretty apparent. Um, so he is going to be under observation right now. And if I notice anything, I will definitely um, try to take action. Um, the easiest thing would be to lift him up and put him in a carrier and take him to a vet But it's not easy because every time I try to pet him he walks away from me But what I have done is I have taken out this carrier So this is the carrier that I used to get boo to the vet and I've used uh, this carrier to get um, I think it was Simba to the vet that time and I think splash also went to the vet in this carrier um, so it's a really easy carrier to use and in the past what I've done is I've just kept it out here with the cats. Right now it does have a wee wee pad inside of it but in the past I've kept it out here with the cats and like when Stella and the kittens were living out here Stella used to just go inside and just hang out and the first time I took Simba to the vet he literally just walked in by himself and he was hanging out in there I just shut him in there and then off to the vet he went. Um, so I'm putting it down here because this is where Ditto likes to hang out. Ditto likes to hang out here uh, under where I have some solar panels. So best case scenario, absolute best case scenario, he goes in there, uh, he makes himself comfortable, and all I have to do is shut the door, take him to a vet. Chances of that happening are slim, but it would be good for him to get familiar uh, with this carrier. That's why I'm putting it here. You never know. Um, you know, with, with cats, with feral cats, you kind of have to just... Uh, take one day at a time one minute at a time especially uh, with something like this uh, you really can't have too much of a plan because you really have to just be able to jump at every opportunity that presents itself so he's just drinking water and as you can see he's limping but then he walks he walks normal for a little bit so i i honestly don't think it's broken i think if it was broken he wouldn't be um moving so fast, moving so much, I think he'd be carrying it differently. So this is what I do with the cats when I want to give them some kind of herbal tinctures or some kind of medication. What I do is I give it to them in an appetizer uh, before their meal. 
Uh, that way they should be good and hungry and eat whatever I give them with whatever treatment or remedy that is hidden in it. So right here I have a churu which I've squeezed out into two portions here and I'm going to add some drops to it. This is the tincture that I'm using. It's Heal All Herbal Blend Glycerin. This is from Dr. Morse's Cellular Botanicals. And this is an immunity boosting formula. So if Ditto does have an infection, this will help his body fight off that infection. So I put three drops in each one of these little portions. Okay, so this worked really well. I put this plate out with the two portions. Ditto went straight to the plate and he ate the side on the left. Right now Ditto's eating out of the dry food feeder. Okay, I just put some more food on the plate. I opened the can of the Performatrin chicken pate. Um, I think they like that. I also scraped some of Boo's leftover breakfast onto the right side of the plate. And I did leave the churu on it. Um, if Ditto does eat it, I think it's going to be fine. If he gets a double dose, it might be actually better for him, so we'll see. So one other thing that I have noticed is that Ditto is putting weight on the front paw, like when he goes up and down the steps. And I guess he doesn't like the food. So, or it could be that I'm sitting here, so let me go move inside. Maybe he'll come back and eat it. Okay, so he went back to the auto feeder and he's eating some dry food out of it. He's not having any mobility issues at all, um, which is good. I just want him to rest the leg. I want him to just go somewhere, you know, hang out by the side of the house where he's been hanging out and just rest his leg. That's what he needs to do. Um, but I will be keeping an eye on him and um, we'll see how it goes. In the meanwhile, I hope somebody eats the food that I put out for them. I'm starting to feel like they just don't like this performance trend food for some reason. They used to love it, but you know, cats go through phases. Okay, it's a few minutes later and I just looked outside and Ditto came back to the plate. And he's eating the leftover raw food from, from Boo, which is odd because he didn't want to eat the raw food that I put out for breakfast. But then again, cats are cats. It looks like he did lick up some of the, uh, the other portion of the churu. Yeah. And hopefully if he does have an infection in that arm, um, it'll definitely work to fight it. All right, so he has a good appetite. That's a good sign. When cats are really sick, they don't like to eat. And he has plenty of places to hang out. One thing that I do want to do is I'm going to take one of the, um, the training pads out of the doghouse shelter. Because I'm wondering if maybe that's why he doesn't want to go in it anymore. Because there's like a crumpled up training pad in there. I'm trying to teach Ditto to sit the way that Grandma Farrell taught Boo to sit. Sit, Ditto, sit and stay. I need to teach him how to stay also. Stay, 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 stay. So I took the roof off of this doghouse shelter. That's what it looks like inside. And um, the training pad that was all bunched up in here was an absolute disgusting mess. I threw it out already. And here's the training pad that's wrapped around the heated mat. And as you can see, I don't know, if, can you see that? So um, someone clawed a hole in it. So I'm going to take this training pad out and put a new one in there. And hopefully once it's nice and clean, maybe I'll put a little bit of catnip in there. Maybe that'll attract Ditto. I just want him to like go in here and like just rest for like days and just heal himself. Uh, because cats can heal themselves. Um, they're really good at that. And um, yeah, so I'm just going to clean this up. One thing that is very helpful, there was like a Rosa Sharon hibiscus tree here uh, that we took out. We moved uh, to a different part of the yard, so it gives me a lot more space. And then this is where a few rose bushes were, and we also relocated the rose bushes, uh, which again gives me a lot more space. Okay, I cleaned everything up. I put the new training pad in there. I wrapped it around the heated pet mat, which is still working. And this is the new gnome. Isn't he cute? 
he has squirrels. Uh, there's a squirrel in his hand and there's a squirrel in his hat. And Grandma Farrell thought he was very appropriate because he's like a gnome protector of the wildlife. So he's the new gnome here. I just sprinkled a little bit of catnip inside of this shelter. And then I also put a trail of catnip, just a little bit of trail of catnip out here, which I'm pretty sure the wind has blown away. But I put the trail through here. Um, and Ditto was hanging out on the driveway. The wisteria are in bloom. It is 7.25 p.m. and I just put more food out for Hydrox and Ditto a little while ago. And I took out my little training stool. Uh, the stool that I used to use outside with Boo and the other cats. I would just sit on the stool and be low to the ground with uh, the cats. And I just did that. I sat out there for probably about 10 or 15 minutes. But Ditto walked away and he is sitting on the driveway right now. So. Hopefully he won't go too far. Hopefully he'll just stay in the yard. And um, yeah, hopefully he will just relax, get a lot of rest, and we'll see his legs start healing. Um, we'll see what tomorrow brings. It is 9 a.m. and I just opened the back door and here's Hydrox and Ditto. It looked like Ditto was walking up from the automatic feeder and Hydrox was laying on the doormat. And I'm gonna keep an eye on Ditto, see how he's walking. He obviously walked up the stairs fine. I'm gonna give them some breakfast. It's about 50 degrees out uh, right now. It was really cold overnight and it's supposed to warm up uh, by 2 p.m. We're supposed to get up to about 62 degrees. So hopefully I'll be able to spend some time outside this afternoon with, uh, with the cats. I don't know if Ditto used any of the shelters. I did not see him in any of the shelters. So he's still limping. He looks about the same as he did yesterday, so uh, it doesn't look like it's worse. So, we'll see what happens today. I'm going to give them some food. It's still very windy also. I just gave the cats three scoops of homemade raw food with some water mixed in. I also put the herbal tincture in the food that I gave them yesterday. I put three drops each, so there's a total of six drops that I've mixed in. And Ditto is very hungry. He's eating the food, which is good. I'm going to make more of an effort just to put raw food out um, for now while Ditto is trying to heal his leg. Um, because it's more biologically appropriate for them and can help heal their body. So we'll see how this goes. One other thing that I want to mention is that Simba had two instances of limping. 
Um, and this happened after he already moved into the house. And I want to say maybe a year and a half apart or a year apart. And both times I brought him to a vet. And both times he was checked out. And both times no causes were found. Which was kind of frustrating at the time. Um, so they eventually just went away on their own after lots of rest. Or as much rest as I could give Simba. I used to put him in my bedroom and he'd lay on the bed and I'd shut the door and I'd try to keep all the other cats out. So I tried to just, you know, give him lots of alone time in the room so he could sleep and heal. So I really hope Ditto does that. I really hope he just finds some place to relax and just really gets off his feet and um, rests. And in order for him to do that, I'm going to have to leave him alone, like on his own. Okay, Ditto, just go rest. I don't want to bother him. But at the same time, I feel like it would be good to try to move him into more socialization. I've been waiting for the warmer weather so I could spend more time outside and try to get him more used to pets. Even Hydrox more used to pets. Um, if I was able to pet Ditto... Um, on a regular basis, like pet him really well, then it would be really easy just to pick him up and stick him in the carrier and take him to a vet if you needed to go to a vet. But since he's not worse than he was yesterday, he's still walking and he's still eating a lot. He has really good appetite and he's not walking around in a stupor. I'm just going to keep him under observation. Okay, so this is what Ditto ate. He just finished eating and he walked off. So he pretty much ate most of the food that I put out. There he is right now. Oh, here's Hydrox. He's, maybe Hydrox wanted to wait until Ditto's done. Hydrox might jump up and finish the rest of the food, which is fine. Ditto had a very, very big breakfast. There's Hydrox. He was eating some of what's on the plate. I could put some canned food out for him. I only had three scoops defrosted. It's about 2.15 right now and I just decided to go outside and take a walk and see if I could spot Ditto and find his hangout. And here he is. There's Ditto. He's hanging out by uh, the side of my house. He found a really nice sunny spot and I know he likes to hang around uh, in this section. So. I'm happy that I found him and I'm happy he's just resting and that he's laying in the sun soaking up some good rays, getting some healthy vitamin D which is really good for healing. So there he is, I'm not going to disturb him, I just want him to stay there all afternoon. Guys look at this, look, I put a bunch of catnip in this carrier and I was hoping Ditto would get in the carrier and look at what's going on right now. Ditto is sitting in the carrier. The problem is, how can I go outside and shut that without him moving? If he lays down and gets comfortable, then chances are much better than I can do that. I'm really afraid if I go outside, he's just going to run out of that carrier. I am so thrilled right now that he's sitting in that carrier. This is like a miracle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go... Is he going to sit down? I want him to lay down. Um, I want to go by the back door and see if he moves. I don't want him running around, so he's been limping. He's still limping, um, and I really, really would like to take him to a vet to get him checked out, um, because he's limping more now than he was earlier. So I would really like to take him and get him checked out, and, um, this would be such a great option if, if I could just shut that carrier on him. The problem is that when I was outside a little while ago, um, he's just staying away from me. So if I try to get too close to him, he kind of tries to run away. He's really just hobbling around on his leg right now. Um, 
It's nice that he looks comfortable in that carrier. That's really nice. Maybe he thinks it's a new house or a bed or something. He's, he's just sitting in there for quite a while. Lay down, ditto. Lay down and get comfortable so I could take you to the vet, okay? Okay? No. So he's still hobbling around. Well, at least he went in it. Over here on the other side of the patio, I do have a trap. And there is a squeeze up on a plate inside this trap. Um, I've had the trap in case I need it for the cats. Like I have it as a backup option. Um, I haven't used it and I do need to adjust it. I think the uh, plate is a little too high on it. So it's there. I don't want to freak Ditto out. So that's why I'm keeping it kind of farther away on the patio. What I don't want is to cause Ditto to run because he should not be running on his leg. I just want him to relax. And I know he's safe in this yard so I'd rather him just hang out in the yard than be roaming around the neighborhood. He should not be roaming around when he's hobbling. He's limping and hobbling, so he should not be roaming around. Look at this, Simba's purring. Ditto's right by the door, look at this. I told Simba to tell Ditto to get in the carrier. I told Simba's gone to the vet twice with a limp, so he knows what it's like. So I told him to help Ditto out and tell Ditto to get in the carrier. Can you do that, please, Simba? Just tell Ditto. Ditto, get in the carrier and we'll help your leg, okay? We'll make your leg feel better, okay? We'll fix your leg, Ditto. Okay, let us fix your leg. Get in the carrier. So with Ditto hanging out here, I can't even go out the back door now. So I'm just gonna let him, let him chill out. It is 7.55 p.m. and here we are. We're just hanging out by the back door. Here's Simba. I don't know where he's going. The inside cat's already had dinner. The outside cat's have had dinner also. And there's Hydrox hanging out and there's Ditto hanging out. And I'm perfectly fine with Ditto getting comfortable right here and sleeping on the doormat all night just to rest. Um, I have no problem with that. Best case scenario would be that he actually gets into this little carrier and decides to sleep in there because I think if he curls up and goes to sleep, I might be able to sneak out and shut it really fast. Um, so that would be absolute best case scenario. Um, chances of that happening are low, but there is the possibility. Um, what I will want to do is go outside and put this trap away. I'm not keeping this trap out overnight with the amount of possums, skunks, and raccoons that are around here. I don't want to trap any of those. This trap is for Ditto um, because I want to try to get him to a vet. So I'd probably have to go out the front door of the house, walk around the yard, and then uh, try to put this away without scaring Ditto off. So we'll see. It's still still a little bit light out. The, the raccoons and other animals usually don't start coming until it gets dark. Sometimes they do though. Sometimes they do start coming like just as the sun's going down. So we I mean, will have to figure that out. It is now 8.15 p.m. and Ditto has curled up and it looks like he's trying to get some sleep. And here's Hydrox. Hydrox is kind of on watch, which is nice. So I'm going to see if I could go out the front door and sneak around and put that trap away. 
I've been reading some strategies about using it and um, some of what I've read is uh, it might be good to put a towel inside of it and maybe put some catnip on the towel and uh, he might go in that way if that's what he uh, is attracted to more than food. It also makes it more comfortable for an animal uh, with an injury to have a towel in the trap um, than not to. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go put it away. I'm also going to see if I could um, maybe adjust it so um, the part that they step on is not as high as it is right now. But I don't want to disturb Ditto, so I'm going to just move really slow and quiet. Look who's here watching me. It's Stella. She's on one of the kitchen chairs. What are you doing, Stella? Okay. It's 9 p.m. Man, I just got back inside. And Ditto has been hanging out. He's still been um, curled up by the back door. I've been in the garage twice. Um, the first time to put the trap in the garage. And then I needed to find a wrench so that I could adjust the trap. So I had to come back inside, look for a wrench, and then go back out to the garage. So both times I walked across the patio and did a looked at me from where he is now. Um, but he stayed where he is, which is good. So I was able to adjust the trap so that the pan on the bottom is lower than it was. And I also made it as sensitive as possible thanks to uh, a YouTube video um, that shows you how to do that. So hopefully Ditto will just spend the night here by the back door because I don't want him walking around or running around. There's nothing that I could do to stop him from walking around or running around. Not that I think he's going to because he's been limping, but I can't go out and grab him because he will uh, move away from me pretty fast. Even though he's limping and hobbling, he's still much faster than I uh, would be. Plus, I don't want to chase him and make him injure himself more. Like, I don't want to go after him to try to grab him and then have him run away in fear and then potentially injure himself more. So, this is where we're at now. He's still under observation. We'll see how it goes tomorrow. And uh, if I do see him move to this carrier, I will try to uh, just quietly and gently shut him in there. So I'm going to try to keep an eye on him. It's 10.15 p.m. and Ditto was hanging out uh, by the back door until around 10 o'clock. And then um, a raccoon showed up at the automatic feeder and then the raccoon came up to the stairs here. Um, and then Ditto started to feel uncomfortable up here. Um, I shooed the raccoon away, but then Ditto walked down the steps. So he kind of hobbled down the steps and he was sitting here on the patio for a while. I don't know if you could see this, but Hydrox is sleeping on this patio chair. So once the weather warms up, usually Hydrox moves over to the patio furniture and likes to sleep here instead of in his shelter. And I don't know where Ditto goes, so. Right now there's still a raccoon in the automatic feeder, but what Ditto then did was he hobbled across the patio. He was limping as he was going, and then he went that way uh, towards the driveway. So, uh, I was like, Ditto, stay here. But, you know, he has a mind of his own. He's gonna do what he wants to do. Hopefully he's going to go shelter someplace safe. You know, Ditto has quite a few places where he shelters. So uh, hopefully he'll shelter someplace safe for the night. And we'll see what happens tomorrow. Um, I do have the trap uh, that I will put out tomorrow. Um, I'll put some 
put some food in it for Ditto. Before I give him and Hydrox any food, I'm going to put food in the trap and see see if he'll venture in there. Um, and if not, we'll just have to uh, see what we could do. It is 9.20 a.m. I just opened the back door and Hydrax was hanging out on the doormat here by the back door. I haven't seen Ditto yet this morning. I've looked outside a few times and I only saw Hydrax hanging out on the doormat. I don't know what happened to Ditto after he walked off the patio yesterday. I don't know where he went. Um, I did not hear any cat fights or anything last night. Hopefully it was a calm night. I'm still concerned about his limping. And I was doing some research with regards to successfully trapping cats and getting them to vets and um, stuff like that. And what I found, what pretty much every site said was that once you trap a cat, good luck ever getting them back in another trap because they're really smart and they learn fast. So Ditto's already been trapped because he's been TNR'd. So I don't know how successful trapping him again would be, but I certainly am going to put the trap out um, I'm gonna, instead of putting a towel in it, I'm gonna put one of the training pads, he's used to that. Um, I'm gonna put a towel over the top of it, I'm gonna put some tuna inside, some really stinky tuna. I'm also, I'm gonna spray it with some pet remedy spray. I'm also gonna spray this carrier that we see here with some pet remedy spray. This is the pet remedy spray, and in the past when I've sprayed this in carriers, the cats usually just go in on their own and hang out because they like the smell of it. It smells really, really stinky. It's made with valerian essential oil as well as uh, some others. Um, so I figured, let me try that. Let me try it in the carrier. Let me try it in the trap and just see, see if Ditto will go in. I don't even know if Ditto is going to be coming around today. Like, honestly, the best thing for him is just to hunker down somewhere and just to rest and sleep and... You know, in nature, that's what animals do when they need to heal themselves. If they're sick or something, they kind of just hibernate for a while and sleep and their body naturally heals itself with many issues. Some of the other information that I read was that sometimes it's better off not moving the cat or trying to take the cat to a vet. And um, the majority of the times the cats will recover uh, from whatever their issue is on their own. And in the past, I've taken that route several times, but for a booze case, like when he had that fever and he was in a stupor, you know, I knew he had to go to the vet. And I would really like to take Ditto to a vet right now just because I don't like how he's limping on that leg. So all I can do is what I can do. Okay, so here's the back of the trap and there's um, a plate of tuna. And I just saw Hydrox went and got Ditto. Um, can you see inside? So there is a training pad and on this trap, this this is actually a door on the side and I'm actually able to lift it up a little bit and just slide the plate of food in there so that's what I've done I have it covered in a towel except for the end with the door and the um, the tripping mechanism so here's Ditto he is obviously still limping it looks like he does not want to put any weight on that leg hopefully he'll smell the tuna and go into the trap that would be the the easiest thing, just go in the trap, Dino. Walk into the trap. I did put the pet remedy in the trap and I put the pet remedy in the carrier. Um, also what I've heard is don't feed the cats. Look at this, please go in. What I've heard is, um, you know, don't provide any food for the cats for, you know, 12 to 24 hours before you want, want to trap them because then they won't eat. Now, I'm not shutting off the automatic feeder because it's, it's, there's no way I'm going to be able to get all the food out of the automatic feeder and turn that off, so. That's his food. I got him. I got him in the trap. That was really easy. I just had to stand here and be patient. 
Wow. So I'm going to go grab another towel to put over it. I want to try to keep him calm. And then I'm going to go and uh, take him to an animal hospital. It is 10.08 a.m. and I cleaned out the back of my car. I have like a mini SUV, so I cleaned it out and this should fit in the back of my car. Um, I fed the inside cats. I have not given Hydrox any food yet because I want to wait until I put this in the back of my car. I don't want Ditto getting agitated by, you know, smelling Hydrox's food or anything. Um, I don't see Hydrox right now. I don't know where he went. Um, I just keep reminding myself that Ditto is safe in this trap. It's probably one of the safest places for him right now. And I don't know exactly what happens to me when situations like this happen, but it's the same feeling that I got with Boo and Stella and the other cats whenever there was some kind of issue similar to this, like a semi-emergency. The only way I could explain it is a core calm. Like I have this calmness throughout the core of my body. It's, it's really weird. It's like, okay, I know what I have to do. I just have to do it and execute it and and everything will be okay. Hopefully everything will be okay. So the plan is to take Ditto to a local animal hospital, 24 seven animal hospital that handles emergencies. Hopefully they will be able to take him. Hopefully the wait won't be too long. Um, I took Boo there when he was having issues um, when I thought he had a UTI and um, you know, they, they checked him out and that wasn't too bad. So I'm hoping it won't be too bad with him now. So I'm gonna put Ditto in the back of my car and then I'm gonna put some food out for Hydrax, gather my things and we're gonna head over to the animal hospital. It's 10.28 a.m. and I am driving to the animal hospital with Ditto. Ditto's in the back and other than some like whimpering, uh, he's been pretty calm. He hasn't been howling, no howling, no meowing, uh, nothing like that. Um, so hopefully he just stays calm. Hopefully everything goes well. And uh, hopefully they can give him some pain meds. Hopefully it's only a sprain. So um, we'll see what happens. They're taking Ditto into the animal hospital. So I had to wait here for almost 40 minutes before a vet tech came out to uh, to see me. Uh, they took information about Ditto and I said, please do as much as you can while you have him here um, because I was able to trap him. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to trap him again. I asked them to check out his mouth, obviously to check out his arm, and I asked them if they could do tests on him, FIV, feline leukemia, all that stuff. So they said they're gonna check him out and then they're gonna call me back. It is 12.45 p.m. right now. I just got home after running some errands on the way back from the animal hospital. One of the places that I went was PetSmart and I bought this. This is a 36 inch folding crate. Uh, it says double door, the brand is Top Paw. The reason why I bought this is to use it as a recovery crate for Ditto if he needs to be in a recovery crate. If he doesn't want to be in a recovery crate, I have been wanting to get a crate to have uh, in case of emergencies, in case um, one of the cats needs to be immobilized. Um, I think it's a good idea to have a crate. So a few years ago when Simba was limping on his leg and I wanted to immobilize him, I got uh, one of the dog play pens um, and I put that in the living room and I put Simba inside of it and it wasn't very long until he clawed his way out of it and it's the kind that was made out of like mesh and nylon and it's no match for a cat's claws. So. Um, yeah, he shredded it. He shredded a big hole and was able to get out of it. So um, I know better than to get that kind. Um, that's why I got this crate. They had smaller crates. They had larger crates. Um, but I decided that this size would be good because it fits in the back of the car if I need to transport it uh, in a car. It also easily fits through a doorway if I need to move it from room to room and um, without taking a cat out of it. So right now I'm just leaving it here. This cost about $50, so I wanna thank everyone who has sent in PetSmart gift cards. I used about three of the gift cards on this, so thank you guys very much. It is 1 p.m. and I just got a call from the animal hospital. I spoke to a really nice vet and she said that Ditto is resting comfortably and she wanted permission to give him sedation so she could really perform a good exam on him. So um, I gave her his history and I told 
her that he's been limping and I said that is the primary reason why I brought him in however if they could also take a look at his mouth and test him for FIV a feline leukemia all that maybe give him a rabies shot uh, that would be great also right boo so um, she said that there's another two animals in front of him they're super super busy today and that she's gonna give me a call once she performs the exam and uh, they know what they're dealing with over there. So she seemed very nice. Hopefully uh, everything goes well. Meanwhile, let me show you what I found here. As if I don't have enough drama today, let me show you what I found. Look what I found. Look what I get to clean up. Cat vomit. I have no idea who did this. I kind of want to say Boo did it because it looks like a Boo type vomit. Um, and because I did not monitor him eating his food today, um, I just kind of left him with the plate. However, it could be Simba or it could be Stella because I'm sure one of them finished off his plate because I did not monitor Boo. And that's what they'll do. So I have no idea uh, who vomited uh, this up. Uh, but I am going to clean it up. Here's Simba. I don't think it's Simba because when Simba does something like that, he usually likes to take credit for it and he usually likes to tell me about it. So I don't think it was Simba. He's resting so peacefully right now. Um, this morning, the inside cats were probably more stressed out about Ditto than Hydrox was. Hydrox is like, yeah, whatever. And the inside cats knew that something different was happening um, when Ditto was in the trap. And I was explaining everything to them um, so that they knew and that they wouldn't be worried. But, you know, some cats just intuitively know things. It is 2 p.m. And Splash and Simba are hanging out on the bed. And the vet just called a few minutes ago, so I thought I would update you on what the vet said. So um, I had explained to the vet what happened to Boo a few years ago how he had a puncture wound and that was causing uh, problems with his leg and when she called back she said that's the same exact thing with ditto he has uh, two puncture wounds uh, on his leg um, like one on each side and she said it looks like they're infected and that's causing him pain and swelling um, she says it does not look like um, it has affected his joints and she said she's going to give him some antibiotics for that. And um, don't be surprised if the swelling drains down into his paw. And then you see issues with his paw. She goes, that's usually how things go. So um, that's that part. And then she said about his mouth, she said he's missing a lot of teeth. He still has his um, canines, like his fangs and a few molars. Um, but she says he has a lot of inflammation in his mouth. Um, she mentioned stomatitis, which we know is like inflammation throughout his digestive system. And we all know that Ditto has been having issues with his mouth and his teeth. So um, it's good to get the diagnosis. So um, she's putting him on antibiotics for that. She doesn't want to put him on steroids because um, she doesn't want to do too much. She wants to focus on the leg, making sure we can get the infection down and get the leg healed. She says if the leg gets worse, um, there's always the potential that it might need to be amputated, but hopefully if you get um, a lot of rest and some good nutrition, then everything will proceed fine. He was tested for FIV and feline leukemia, and I talked to her about both of those. She's waiting for the test results. She said, I shouldn't have to wait 60 days for the leukemia diagnosis like what happened with Boo. She says, if it comes back negative, it's most likely that he will be negative with it. Um, she also said that I should keep him inside in some kind of recovery room for at least two weeks. Two weeks. So I'm trying to clear out Boo's room right now. That's really the only room I have. Um, I am going to put the crate together, see if I can get him to go in the crate. Uh, if not, then he's going to be in Boo's room. Boo's not going to like that. And I don't think the other cats are going to like it. So that room's going to be off limits and we're going to go back to using gates and stuff like that. So um, right now I'm just taking it one minute at a time. Like I can't even think far ahead. I just have to do what I have to do right now. Um, so 
uh, right now I'm cleaning out Boo's room. Uh, my office has been in Boo's room for like the past six, seven months. So now I'm relocating myself back to the dining room. Like this house is way too small for my needs right now. It is just, I need more rooms and I need more room. Um, so I'm just trying to make do with what I have right now. And she said I can pick him up anytime after three because she wants to keep him like on observation for a little while. And she said he did really good that he wasn't like really wild or anything. He just swatted a few times, but other than that, he's been pretty good. So, um, she also has him on a painkiller that lasts about a day and she's going to give me some kind of prescription painkiller, I think. Oh, and, um, I asked her about fleas and worms and she said she didn't find any fleas on him, but she will put, um, like flea medication. I asked her for revolution. So she put, she said she'll put that on. She'll give me, um, the same anti-worm medicine that I gave the other cats, um, a while ago. And I also asked her if I could get some revolution for all these other cats too, which I'm happy she uh, is going to give me four doses because I, I said just in case there's any kind of cross-contamination. So she understood. So, um, yeah, I'm going to pick him up in a little while. I'm not going to rush anything. I'm just going to take my time. I, there's a lot of things I need to move around and uh, we'll see how it goes. It is 3.20 p.m. and I'm cleaning out Boo's room for Ditto, making a lot of changes, just trying to simplify it in here. This is the day sofa. I took everything off of it. Um, the sheets that I had on top of it are in the washing machine. So those will be freshly washed. I had cat towers over here and I took one of the shelves from the living room uh, that was originally here and I moved it back here because this is what Boo had when he moved into this room and the first thing he did was jump on top of this and try to get out the windows so in case Ditto does the same thing I'd rather him jump on top of this it's nice and stable and clean versus those two cat towers that were here that are all ratty and should honestly probably be replaced. So here in this corner I had the enclosed litter box with some shelves on top of it and the live streaming set up so I moved the enclosed litter box to another room so the cats can continue to use it up here and um, this is what's left of the live streaming set up. I don't have a computer hooked up to it so nothing is live streaming right now um, but I'm just going to keep it here because it's a big hassle to uh, disconnect everything and then move it so uh, hopefully this will not cause him any problems. And here I have a narrow TV table. And um, there's a TV on top in case I want to sit here and watch TV. And then um, on that middle shelf there's some uh, laptops that I have for work. And um, there's an Xbox that I haven't used once since it came into this house. It used to be in my office, but uh, it's here now. And this is the litter box that the cats don't use that I thought I would put in here for Ditto. I took the top off, it's like a covered litter box. And uh, I went downstairs to find like a mat to put next to it and then I just came upstairs and guess who was using it? Simba, yeah, so now I gotta scoop it out. Then over here I have my work desk. This is where I've been doing my work. Um, and I cleared out the chair and I cleared out everything that was underneath it. And so um, I'm thinking maybe I'll put a nice covered cat bed there for Ditto. I don't know, I'm just thinking out loud. I'll figure it out. Here's Boo, he's hanging out on the cat tower in the dining room, and I've been trying to explain to him what's going on, that uh, Ditto's gonna be staying in his room for a while. I don't know how he's gonna handle it, really. You gonna be okay, Boo? So there's been times where Boo just uh, moves between these cat towers and uh, the, uh, the bedroom, and the living room and downstairs and he doesn't spend much time in his room but there's other times where he does spend a lot of time in his room so um, you know he really likes uh, laying on the cat condo near the window recently for example so I hope Boo's gonna be okay by, um, by not being able to go in his room now it could be a good thing it could be a good thing because then it really forces Boo to integrate more with the other cats. He always kind of holds himself above them, if that makes any sense, like he has, uh, you know, alpha attitude. So um, we'll see what happens. So this is what's going on in here. I put the crate together and it's really a perfect size uh, for under this little desk. It fits on top of the desk. And I was originally thinking, oh, I'll put it on top of the desk and I'll put Ditto inside of it. and. 
Then the other cats can use the room and Ditto can be in the crate on top of the desk and you know, it'll be fine. Um, but I think it's better for him to be on the floor uh, right now at least. It's just gonna be easier for me to get him out of the trap and into this cage. I'm hoping I can do that. Um, the trap has a front door and a back door and I'm hoping if I just uh, put the trap in the door to this crate and open the back door of the trap that he'll go into this crate. So I bought that white tub at Dollar Tree today. I didn't realize it has like a small hole on the side, but that's okay. It doesn't affect how I'm using it um, because I thought it was a good size for a small litter box. All the litter boxes in the stores were uh, quite a bit larger and I just wanted something small for the crate. I also put a water bowl in there. I'm not putting any food in there yet because I don't know what the doctors are going to say as far as feeding him. But um, I put a towel and he has two brand new toys. He has like a ball toy and then he has like a zebra, mouse, uh, bird, fish combination toy. It's like all, all weird stuff. Boo's first toy when he was in this room was a little squeaky zebra. So I'm hoping maybe the zebra will bring us some good luck with Ditto. So right here I have Stella's favorite um, little plastic bed when she came inside. It's not the same exact one she used. It's, you know, another one, but uh, it's exactly what she loved laying in. And then one of the blankets that were given to the cats I put in there because Ditto likes to you know, burrow in the dirt outside. So I'm thinking uh, that might be nice for him. Uh, there's another litter box here with a little mat. I moved the Halloween scratcher into this room because I feel like if Ditto wants to hide, he can hide in there. And then I gave him this royal cat bed. Um, this was downstairs. It's the cleanest of all the beds. Uh, the cats love using the round Amazon beds. Uh, so those they get a lot of use from the cats and Stella hasn't been using this one as much. Um, she's been using the one on top of the armor, like the penthouse one, a lot. So I cleaned this one up and I thought Ditto might like it. Now, these things are all here because if Ditto uh, throws a fit for being in this um, training crate or cage, then I'm going to let him out in the room. Then he'll have those other things to use. But best case scenario is I get him here, I get him out of the trap, I get him into this crate and he spends several days recuperating in this crate and acclimating himself to being inside of a house. This cat has never been inside of a house before. That's best case scenario. That's what I'm shooting for. Worst case scenario is that he's you know, completely uncontrollable and bouncing off the walls in this room. However, once I put the covers back on this day sofa, they do hang over the front and then Ditto will have a nice hiding space under there. Um, he's going to do two things. He's going to try to escape and he's going to try to hide. Um, usually that's what happens. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I know I got super lucky with Boo, but Boo had so much more training outside. Boo had two months of one-on-one -on -one training when he was living outside. I was able to pet him. I was able to brush him. Like, he was, you know, really well trained. Um, and I was able to pick him up and put him in a carrier. Whereas with Ditto, um, we're, we're not even, like, halfway with Ditto. Uh, maybe we're like one-tenth or one-fifth of the way. Um, you know, when he was outside, sometimes he'd headbutt my hands, sometimes he'd rub up against me, depending on what kind of mood. But lately, he's been running away from me, so um, we'll see what happens. Happy graduation, Boo. You've just graduated to the rest of the house. Yeah, you've graduated. You don't need your room anymore. You're a big graduate boy. It is 6.08 p.m., and here's Ditto. We just got back, and as I'm unloading the car, I just put him here on the patio so he could see Hydrox. Here's Hydrox. Hydrox walked up to the carrier that Ditto is in, and they sniffed each other, so Hydrox knows where Ditto is. And I just want Ditto to kind of calm down a little bit. And this carrier was a donation 
that the animal hospital gave to me. So they received it as a donation and they're passing it on. So they've donated this carrier to Ditto and it's really nice. It's the uh, two door carrier. So there is a door in the front and door in the top. And uh, these are the, uh, the carriers that I like to use for the cats. And they put a towel inside of it and they put another towel on top of it. So they donated the two towels for Ditto and also the carrier. And I thought that was really nice. I was totally surprised by that. Here is the trap. It is a tomahawk live trap and they said they didn't want to send him home in something this big. They put the towels inside of it. So I'm just about to bring Ditto inside. I just want to kind of get him acclimated so he knows where he is. Here's Stella. She's laying on the bed. Here's Simba. He saw Ditto come in and he's afraid of Ditto. He's like, why is there a cat in the carrier? So here's Ditto. He's in his carrier and I open the window so he could smell the same air that he smelled when he was outside. He's still a bit anxious, so I'm just gonna let him sit here for 20 or 30 minutes. I did, that's what I did with Boo. I let him just kind of relax before I took him out. I don't want him to go crazy. So that's what I'm gonna do with Dead. I'm just gonna leave him here. Or maybe I'll just sit with him for a little while and then we'll see what happens. Boo's very concerned. He's very concerned that there's a new cat in there. So when Boo came inside, like Ditto's inside right now, I made sure the other cats were downstairs. So stuff like this would not happen. So they would not try to claw each other under the door or anything. This is why I would really like Ditto to get in the cage. So he's not going to go near the door, and then the other cats won't go near the door. I'm going to put a towel along the bottom. I'm here with Ditto and I'm waiting a little while longer before I take him out of the carrier because uh, what happened was when I put the uh, sofa cover in the dryer before I went to the vet um, there was a power outage and uh, it knocked the dryer out and then uh, I didn't realize that so I had to restart the dryer when I got back so I'm still waiting for everything to dry. Meanwhile, Ditto is staying calm. He's breathing heavy, but uh, he's just calm on the blanket. It's 7.15 p.m. and I don't know if you guys see that, but he's resting very nicely in the carrier. I'm putting the sheets on this day sofa. And um, after that, I'm gonna put the pillows on, shut the window, and try to move Ditto from the carrier to the crate. Okay, let's see if we can move you, Ditto. Would you move into the crate? Okay. You can move. Move into the crate. You can move into the crate. Go ahead. You don't want to move? You don't want to come out? Go ahead, Ditto. Go out. You go in the crate, okay? Come on. You can go in the crate. Go ahead. Go ahead, Ditto. Go in the crate. 
crate. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go in the crate. You can go. Go ahead. Go ahead. We're going to get you well, okay? Go in the crate. You don't want to go in the crate? No, why? Come on, you go. You get water and food. Go ahead. You get water and food. You want to go? No, you want to stay in here? Okay. You can stay in here. You don't want to go in the crate? Can I shut the door? You shut the door, you go back in or you come out? Go back in or come out? You want to go back in? You come out? Go ahead. Go ahead, you go out. Okay. Let's try this again. Let's try to get Ditto from the carrier to the cage. Go ahead, go eat your food. Go eat the food, Ditto. Go eat the food. You can do it. Go ahead. I'm gonna push you, little, little push. Okay, you go. Go ahead. There's food. Whoops, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, baby. You got a litter box and you got food. Did I look how nice? Look, did I? You're in a house. You're in a house. You're okay. You have food. You have water. You have litter. So what I might do is grab some more towels and then cover the sides of this cage with towels. I'll hang some towels down off of the table because he's, he's obviously having a stress reaction right now. And the reason why I was wearing long gloves is because at the vet, she said that he was swatting. So I just assumed maybe he would be swatting her also. We can see that his leg was shaved. And he does have a lot of um, inflammation in his mouth, so that's why he's not howling or meowing. He's looking at the windows. So I'm gonna go grab some more towels. And I'm gonna hang them off this table so he can relax a little bit more. I just want him to relax today. Hopefully he'll use the litter box. 
I sprayed Pet Remedy on the towel. He's looking at the windows. You're okay, Ditto. You're okay, you want some food, you want some water? Right now he's eating homemade raw food and then I also put some tuna, some canned tuna because it's really stinky. Instead of
want some more food, Ditto? Would you like some more? like it. You like it. There you go. You can eat it. Okay. You can eat it. I just remembered that I have some of these fleece blankets in the closet in this room. So I just took one out and I laid it over the table. I'll probably see if there's another one laid over the other side. It is 7.50 p.m. right now and I've been sitting here looking through some of my cat books. I'm just reading what I can on the stomatitis and um, what they say about um, leg injuries and stuff like that. And I've just been trying to be a calm presence for Ditto, and he's laid down, and he's relaxing, and that's what I want him to do. I just want him to relax tonight. This might be, like, the first time in a very long time, if, if like, ever, that he can sleep without worrying about predators or, you know, just sleep without worrying about anything. He's perfectly safe in this pet crate. He has everything he needs. He has litter, water, and food. And that litter might be a little bit small. I might have to put a little bit bigger litter pen in there. I don't want to disturb him. I just want him to like relax and get good sleep. Meanwhile, in the living room, good job, Boo. You're doing really good, Boo. I know it's hard to give up your room, but you're doing a really good thing. Okay, Boo? Okay, I just got back. I ran to Petco to uh, look for um, a litter box, and it looks like Ditto is calm and relaxing. He ate all the food. Which is good. That was a good portion of food. I don't know if he drank any water, but tomorrow I'll start him on meds. When he was at the vet, I asked the vet, and she told me that he was on like a 24-hour or 12-hour painkiller. So that's why I didn't want to start him on any meds with his dinner. So I'm going to start him on his meds tomorrow. 
And this is how he's going to spend his first night inside. So there's the new litter box that I bought. And it looks like it's pretty much the same size as what's in there already. So I'm going to leave what's in there. I did buy uh, one that's a little bit bigger, but I think it's going to be too big. So we'll just leave it at that for now. I'm opening up the window just a little bit to get some fresh air in here. It's kind of stinky. He smells like a vet. He also smells like a feral cat that's been living outside for his whole life. It is 9.30 p.m. I just got back from a local supermarket. I went to ShopRite, and uh, this is what I found, and this is exactly what I was looking for. This is a medium-sized litter box. So this is the small kitten-sized litter box um, that we just looked at, and this is just a few inches bigger, um, but it's much smaller than a large, um, and they only had a few of these, so I picked this up, and maybe tomorrow I'll swap it out with the one that is in Ditto's crate. It's about 11 p.m. I'm absolutely exhausted because I have just been on the go all day. And I'm getting ready for bed. And this is what's going on in the hallway. Splash. I don't know if he's being nosy or if he thinks he's going to guard Ditto's door tonight. I think he's being nosy. I don't want anyone bothering Ditto tonight. It is 8.34 a.m. and there's Boo. I'm really proud of him because he's doing so well. Um, he slept on one of the swivel chairs in the living room last night, his favorite chair. And then um, around 4 o'clock in the morning, he jumped on the bed and he slept on the bed the rest of the night. Um, he's still grooming a lot, and I did get Revolution for him to put on. I haven't seen any fleas. I've seen what looks like some flea dirt. Um, so I was trying to practice parting the hair on the back of his neck this morning. His fur is so thick, it's like almost impossible. So when you apply Revolution... You have to part the hair so you see skin. And it takes a long time to find an area where you can part his hair and see skin. I mean, his fur is probably as dense as Stella's. It's it's kind of amazing. I didn't realize how dense his fur was because it's not as it's not as thick and fluffy as Stella's fur is. Like his fur is more fine, but it is really dense. So here's Stella. Let's see if we could practice on Stella. Let's try to part her hair so we could see some skin. And as you can see, it's really hard. <laughs> I can't see any skin. There's a little bit. Okay, there's like a little bit of skin. But I really got to work hard to find it. And they say you're supposed to part it so you have like a whole, a whole strip of skin. I want to put Revolution on... Um, as many of these cats as I can, hopefully today. But Boo got a little smart afterwards, so I have to kind of catch him when he's unaware. Okay, I finally got down. So there, like right there, I could put some revolution on that. That's what I would have to look for. Stella, you have such beautiful thick fur. Good morning, Simba. So Simba and Splash were, they were up hunting or playing last night, right guys? I heard a lot of noise. Hope you left Ditto alone. So I did have a security camera on Ditto, and I checked him a few times overnight, and I was hoping he would get really good sleep. I don't know how much sleep he got, but I know he got rest because he's been in the crate, um, you know, overnight. So he hasn't been moving around all that much, which is good because I want him not to, um, you know, like, jump around on that leg. However, he was moving around, like, every few minutes. It could be uh, that he was in pain, but they did have him on a, a pain medication. I'm going to give him more medication this morning. It could be that um, he just wasn't comfortable in the crate because obviously it's the first time he's been in a crate. It also could be that he normally doesn't sleep well at night because feral cats usually don't. You know, at night they're on the guard against predators and stuff, so they usually don't sleep very well. So it could be that he's just so used to not sleeping well at night. 
we'll see how today goes, right, Simba? I'm going to give him his meds with his breakfast, and um, I might let him out of the out of the crate today. We'll see how it goes. The reason I put him in the crate was because I didn't want him to, like, hurt himself by going crazy in the room when he came out of the carrier, and that worked. I mean, it kind of just kept him contained, and he wasn't bouncing around like Boo, you know, pretty much flew to the windows and tried to escape, so... Um, it stopped Ditto from doing that, and it also gave him a chance to become acquainted with the surroundings, so he's had a chance to calm down. It is 9 a.m., and I just put Revolution on the back of Boo's neck. He was in the cat tower uh, in the dining room looking out the windows, and I was able to uh, easily put it on. He didn't give me too much of a fight, but like after he realized what happened, he jumped down, and that's why he's here right now. So I tried putting Revolution on Simba while he was laying on the bed. The minute he felt it hit his skin, he jumped and uh, he ran under the bed. Then I was able to uh, follow him over here to the stairs and I cornered him and I was able to put the rest on the back of his neck. So Simba has had it, Boo has had it, and this is Stella. I need to get her next. Maybe I'll pick her up and put her on a cat tower. It's the easiest way to do it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do splash at all. If I do splash, it'll have to be maybe later. I don't know. We'll see. I got. I still have to feed Ditto breakfast, but I just wanted to get Boo. Um, so, the cats have had Revolution before, and they were okay with it. No side effects. Hopefully, there won't be any side effects this time. It's a really safe medication. And um, we'll see. We'll see if Boo keeps over-grooming. We'll see if it's due to fleas um, or what. Um, this uh, revolution um, guards against like six different things. I know it's fleas. I know it's ear mites. Um, I think it even handles a few types of worms. Um, so we'll see how, uh, if we notice a difference with Boo. This is Ditto's breakfast. I'm giving him a small portion. I want to make sure he eats all of it. I also squeezed up part of a churu on top. And it has both of his meds in here. Um, one is a liquid that I mixed in, the other is a capsule that I broke up and sprinkled on top and I kind of hit it with the churu. So hopefully Ditto will eat this. Let's go see Ditto. It's still dark in Ditto's room because I shut the curtains last night around 4 a.m. because the, uh, the floodlights on the patio go on with motion so they kept going on and off and I thought maybe that's why he wasn't sleeping well. Good, m Good morning, Ditto. I know you're trying to hiss at me. You're trying to hiss at me. I'm going to give you breakfast. You want breakfast? You want some breakfast? Okay, I'll give you some breakfast. I just gave him his breakfast. And hopefully he'll eat it because he needs to get the meds. The heat is on right now. I could feel it blowing, so I'm going to shut that off. He doesn't look too happy, but... At least he's nice and safe and he can rest. Um, the plan is hopefully to open this door to the crate later today to let him walk around. But first I want him to eat the breakfast and I'll leave the room so he can feel more comfortable to eat. Ditto ate all of his food so now I am giving him some more. There's no medication in this food. I just wanted to make sure he ate all the food that had the medication in it so I gave him a small amount. Um, he probably had one scoop of homemade raw food on the first plate, so this will be like another scoop. Thankfully, he really likes this food and what was remaining of the churu I put on top. He's very nervous, but I'm able to put the plate in and take the other plate out without him trying to swat at me or anything. So, you know, he's calm, but at the same time, he's nervous. I think he basically has a, a good amount of anxiety right now, so... Um, I'm curious to see if he'll eat while I'm sitting here. I know he'll eat when I'm not here, but will he eat while I'm sitting here? I've been sitting here a few minutes and he was looking at the food and he almost went for it, so I moved back a few feet. Let's see if he'll go for it now. Okay, I left the room to get the uh, the other litter box and I just came back in and he was, I guess he was trying to eat, so I'm gonna leave again. Here's Hydrox, he's hanging out under the house. I just put a plate of food out for him. He has some tuna, some canned food, some homemade raw food. He has a bunch of different food to choose from. 
Here's Ditto. It sounded like he was demanding more food, so I'm going to give him some canned tuna now since all of the defrosted raw food has been eaten. Okay, you want some tuna? Want some tuna, baby? Okay. It's 10 a.m. and Ditto's getting a little bit of his voice back because I can hear him kind of howling a little bit and Boo's very upset. So he did not eat most of the tuna that I gave him, but it does look like he used the litter box, which is good. I'm glad he used the litter box. And he's really talkative right now. Like he probably doesn't want to be in here, but he needs to rest his leg and he needs to heal his leg and he needs to get his meds. He cannot be outside right now. The vet said he has to be kept inside for two weeks. And he needs to just wait for those meds to kick in. So the meds that I gave him today can take up to two hours to kick in, especially for the anti-pain, uh, anti-anxiety. But maybe it already kicked in and maybe that's why he's feeling a little bit more like rambunctious. So um, I'm glad he used the litter box. I'm thinking maybe I'll get some calming music. I knew I do have that um, album, that Relaxation for Cats album. Uh, let me go see if I could maybe bring a tablet in here and play it on a tablet. I'm also trying to make myself some breakfast this morning. So first I'm going to make myself breakfast, eat something, and then I'll see about putting some music in here for him. I just opened the cage. I don't know if he's going to come out or stay in. Do you want me to put a bed in there for you? Okay, he's gonna lay down. Okay, I'm gonna close it again and leave the room. It's 12.10 p.m. right now, and as I'm working, I'm kind of keeping an eye on Ditto. I do have one of the security cameras pointed at him, and it seems that over the past hour or so, he's getting better sleep than he did last night. So last night, he was setting off this motion camera every few minutes. Maybe he would not set it off for like 10 minutes occasionally or 15 minutes occasionally, but uh, it seems today uh, he's getting more chunks of sleep. Um, he's probably setting it off every 15 or 20 minutes, which is good. So it seems that Ditto likes to sleep more during the day, which would make sense because as a feral cat, he's safer taking cat naps during the day than he is at night. So we'll see how it goes. It could also be that the meds kicked in and they're making him sleepy. So. Anyway, I'm happy uh, that he's just nice and calm in the crate and he's not meowing. He's really just resting and that's the goal. The goal is to get him rested and well. It is 4.39 p.m. I just got home a little while ago and Stella has been relaxing on the bed and I finally got the revolution on her. She was so resistant to it today like she threw fits when I was trying to put it on her earlier and she's a very very strong cat like, there's no restraining Stella so um, I figured I would wait until she was sleeping but I got home and she wasn't sleeping she was just deeply relaxed and I was able to part the hair on the back of her neck and put it on there and put it like right around like right around here, yeah, right here. I put it right here. So hopefully she won't be able to lick that area. And here's Simba. Simba's relaxing and I checked on Ditto and Ditto's relaxing. I'm gonna let him relax as long as possible. 
Here's Boo. Even Boo's relaxing. I feel bad for Boo because he doesn't have his room anymore. But, um, I think Boo almost pooped in the kitchen today. So, I have, like, um, a pile of paper bags, like paper grocery bags, because they don't do plastic bags around here. And some of the paper bags were, like, stacked on the floor. And I'm like, what is Boo doing around there? He was, like, sniffing around, sniffing around, sniffing around. And so I, like, and so I, like, crouched down, and I looked under the table, and Boo was in a squatting position, and he was moving, like, back and forth on his legs. I said, oh, my gosh, Boo looks like he was going to take a poop. Thankfully, Boo did not take a poop, but he is on observation now because I got to give him a lot of extra attention because Ditto is in his room. Right, Boo? I keep telling Boo that, you know, Boo had to heal his leg in that room, and now Ditto has to heal his leg in that room, right, Boo? So we gotta pay it forward to Ditto, right? Look at Boo. He's sitting in a box. Boo, you're such a nice boy. Hello, Boo. It is 8.05 p.m., and I just took out the litter box that was in the crate. And I put this one in. It's a little bit bigger. I think it's a better size for Ditto. Unfortunately, um, it takes up about a fourth of uh, the crate. Um, but to make up for it, what I did was I gave him a really comfy plush blanket on this side. It's the, um, the beige blanket. He's kind of half laying on it. Um, ideally, that's where he would lay in that corner um, near his water bowl. And he'll have some food soon. I need to um, clean up outside and give Hydrox some food and give the inside cats some food. And then I'm going to feed Ditto last because um, he's supposed to be on meds every 12 hours and he had breakfast um, around 9. So um, I will be probably feeding him um, maybe 8.30, um, 9, some, sometime between 8.30 and 9. Um, but he has been a wonderful patient so far. He's been really really good he's been really calm and just on his best behavior i'm absolutely um i'm very surprised and i'm very happy at um just what good behavior he's been on i'm kind of wondering if i should turn the litter so it's in the other direction but if i figure if he wants to stretch out i'd rather have um, like that long area uh, all along the back kind of where he is if I think this litter box is too big I could always put the other one back in we'll just see uh, we'll see how this one goes this one's a much better size for a grown cat it's 8.15pm and I just put a plate of food out for Hydrox and here's Hydrox is hanging out under the house. And the reason why I'm standing out here is because I want to see what he's going to do. Normally when I put food out for him, he runs over to the fence and calls for Ditto. And he's obviously not doing that. So I think he knows Ditto's not outside. And I put the plate of food here on the patio because he's he has not been eating by the back step. I think he's just hanging out. Maybe he's waiting for Ditto to come around. I don't know. I'm going to move it farther away from uh, the shelter. Here's the food right now. And then here's the shelter that Hydrox likes to lay in. It's, it's too close um, for like when raccoons and stuff come around. But now he's looking at it. I want to move it farther toward the feeding table. He can walk over there and eat it if he wants. But he did not eat the food that I put out for breakfast, and he did not eat the food that I put out yesterday for dinner. Um, he might have been eating the dry food out of the automatic feeder, I don't know. But uh, chances are good that he did. Okay, I just moved it over here closer to the feeder. There's water spilled everywhere because I just refilled all of the water bowls. It's 823. I just came back into the recovery room and look at this. Ditto's on the new blanket that I gave him. 
And it looks like he made a pee pee in the litter. Good job, Ditto. Maybe he drank some of the water. And this is what he's getting for dinner. So he's getting like a scoop of the homemade raw food with water mixed in and um, a little bit of a churu on top. And that's just to hide the painkiller medication. So it's a little capsule that they say to open up and sprinkle on his food. And just to uh, disguise it, I put the churu on top. They say that it has no taste. So just in case it does, I put the churu on top. And uh, so this is like a painkiller that lasts like 12 hours. There you go, Ditto. If you eat all that, I can give you some more food, okay? I just want to make sure that you get your medication. Now, when Boo came home with the problem with his leg, I didn't have to give him pain medications. He came home um, with like a three-day painkiller in his system. The vet said it was the same painkiller that they give the cats uh, when they get um, spayed or neutered, and it lasts in their system for three days. So that's what they gave Boo. And then I don't remember having to put any medication in his food um, at all. So um, maybe I did, but I, I honestly don't remember. Okay, Ditto, I'll leave and then you can eat, okay? And then I'll come back. So I shut the ceiling light off, the big light, and I put a little lamp over on the side. And he's eating while I'm here in the room. That's really good. So I'm going to let him eat. And I'm gonna feed the other cats. I didn't feed them yet. Ditto was actually howling a little bit, so maybe he's starting to get his voice back. Um, I'm gonna feed the other cats and I'll be back. All right, I just fed the uh, the rest of the cats and Ditto ate all of his food, so I'm gonna give him some more food. Good job, Ditto. He's kind of sitting on the plate, so. Today he's eating the food with me sitting here close to him, so that's really good. And that's it, that's a huge dinner, so. Uh, the inside cats get a scoop each for breakfast and dinner, and I just gave Ditto three scoops. A few days ago, when Ditto was still outside, I had a chance to pet him. And I was actually kind of shocked at how bony he is. Like, it would be good if he put on some weight while he's here. And since he is using less calories, because he's only relaxing in this crate, uh, hopefully he will do that. When he's outside, he's a very active cat. Outside cats are more active than indoor cats, um, you know, just in general. And especially when they're not sleeping all night or when they're not getting good rest, so he doesn't have to be on high alert all the time. I'm glad he's enjoying the food. He just finished his food. He ate it really fast, so let's hope he does not vomit it up. I'm glad he likes this food. I'm going to have to make more, like, probably within a few days because I don't have much left. That's all he's getting. I'm not giving him any more. Maybe later, when the cats have crunchies, I'll give him a few crunchies. But I've been trying not to bother him too much because I really want him just to get comfortable and relax. Right, Ditto? I'm happy he likes the new blanket. And I hope he gets good to sleep. I'm happy that he's at least pretty content in the cage or the crate. You, you okay, Ditto? You okay? Because I do want him to heal. I want him to stay off of his arm. And I want him to heal it. Right, Ditto? Right? Okay. Let me just hang out here with you. 
I actually want to go run an errand. I need to return something to PetSmart before they close, and they close in 20 minutes. So I'd really like to do that. It is 10.45 p.m. and Ditto's doing really good. He was resting uh, tonight. I went out and I ran some errands and I just got back maybe like five or 10 minutes ago. Um, I gave the cat some crunchies and Ditto had um, half of a churu and he had a few crunchies on it. And now I'm gonna give him a little bit of canned food, just a little bit as a nighttime treat. Um, I don't wanna give him too much because um, you know, he had a big dinner and also I want to make sure he's hungry for breakfast um, when he gets two medications for breakfast. He's doing really good and um, I just bought a new lamp for this room, um, which I have on right now so it gives it a nice soft light versus the really strong uh, harsh ceiling light. Um, so that'll be nice and I, I shut the curtains again. Um, so the outside light doesn't bother him and uh, after I give him some food if he eats it then I'll shut the light off and it'll be like um, ready for his bedtime so okay he ate some of the food so I'm gonna leave the room and I'll be back in a little while he doesn't have to eat it all I just want to make sure that he had a little snack because everyone else is having a snack Good morning, Ditto. Are you ready for some breakfast? I just put Ditto's breakfast together for him. He's having a scoop of the homemade raw food with some water mixed in and both of his medications mixed in, the gabapentin and the Veriflox. And I put a uh, part of a churu on top uh, to entice him to eat. So hopefully he'll eat all of this. And if he does, I have more food for him. There you go, Ditto. Today, I would like to open the door to this crate and let him out. The reason why I kept him in here um, until now is that last night I wanted to sleep in this room, but I wanted to keep him in the crate because I wanted to keep him calm. And the reasons why I wanted to sleep in this room were uh, because I wanted to just kind of monitor how he's doing, see how he's sleeping. And I also wanted him to get used to me. I wanted him to know that I'm not a threat, that if he sees me sleeping in this room, like I'm not a predator for him. Uh, he, doesn't, he doesn't have to worry about me. And right now I'm sitting close to him and he's eating his food. He went over to it pretty quickly. So I'm hoping that helped a little bit with getting him comfortable with me. Um, I did not get a good night's sleep at all. I tried to go to sleep around 12.30, but I could not fall asleep. Like all night, I could not fall into a deep sleep at all. It was like maybe a light sleep, but then the littlest thing would like wake me up. And I realized that that is how Ditto sleeps. Ditto really doesn't fall into a deep sleep. Um, he just kind of... Um, you know, gets himself into a light sleep for a few minutes and then the littlest thing will wake him up and it's probably a survival mechanism from living outside or it could be that he's just, you know, full of stress and anxiety from uh, being in a house, you know, being in this crate. If we think about, like, what, what's he feeling? What kind of emotions is he going through? Um, it could be causing him anxiety. So... What I would like to do today is open the door to the crate and then just let him, you know, wander around the room. I would like to be in the room when that happens, just to make sure he doesn't get into trouble, but I don't know if he would actually leave the crate while I'm in the room. Um, the other thing that I would like to do is go out and get him his own cat bed. So originally I thought I would let him use this bed, which is Stella's royal bed. But then I was thinking about it, and he might not be comfortable because it smells like the other cats, they've used it. So what I'd like to do is go out and buy him his own bed, so that way it'll be fresh and won't smell like another animal. 
Good job, Ditto. You're such a good boy. I'm going to go get you some more food, okay? Okay? I just gave Ditto another plate of food, so he has another scoop of homemade raw food, which he's eating now. And I also gave him one of the Primal Raw Rabbit Nuggets. I don't know if he likes it. I hope he does. But that's what's to the left of what he's eating now. And there's a little bit of a churu on top of each one. But he really loves the homemade raw food. So why would I want to give him raw food um, instead of canned food or dry food? Um, raw food is closest to a cat's natural diet. So when Ditto lives outside and he's out in the woods and he's hunting and he's, you know, eating mice or chipmunks or birds, whatever he's hunting, he doesn't cook that. He does not cook his food. He eats it raw. And that is what his body is biologically designed to eat, raw food. Um, and when you cook protein, um, you change the structure of it somewhat, um, you denature the protein. So it's actually easier for him to digest raw food than it is for him to digest cooked food. And that's the reasoning behind feeding a cat uh, raw food. They are obligate carnivores, so um, they have extremely strong stomach acid. Some people are worried about you know, bacteria or potential pathogens in the food, but cats have a very different digestive system than humans. And that's really, you know, a very little concern. Raw food diets have also been shown to be very healing. And that's what I want Ditto to do. I really want him to heal and get well and get strong. Maybe put on some weight. That would be good. And with regards to the amount of food that I'm feeding him, I'm just trying to judge it on his level of hunger and um, what he was eating outside. Even though his activity level is very low while he's in this crate, um, he's extremely, extremely thin. And you could feel every bone in his back. So it would be good to put a little weight on him. I don't want to do it too fast, so I'm not going to, like, give him, like, six scoops of uh, food at every meal. But I think, I think for now, for now he's getting a good portion. And see, like that, if he decides he's not going to eat at all, that's fine. I'm not going to force him to eat at all. He'll eat what he feels like eating. I'd rather that he had enough and he feels comfortable and satisfied than he feels hungry. Good job, Ditto. So the goal for today is for him to get more rest and um, to see if he comes out of this crate. The other nice thing about having him in the crate is that if one of the other cats should get in the room, I know there's not going to be an issue between Ditto and the other cat. And um, Ditto is FIV positive. And the vet did tell me that I do have to be cautious with him around any other cats that are not FIV positive because if they got into a fight and uh, there was any kind of bites, um, that it could be transferred to the other cats. Now, Boo is also FIV positive and I had to be super cautious when I was integrating him um, into the house with the other cats because the other cats are not. Um, and that took a long time. Um, and I feel pretty comfortable that Pooh's not going to bite anyone. They've gotten into fights, but it's usually swatting fights. Um, there were times when Pooh was like nipping at the cats, but it takes a deep puncture wound. Okay, ditto. Okay. All right, I'll stop talking about it. I'll turn your plate around so you could eat more if you want. And then I'm going to, I'm going to go and I'm going to run to the store. It's 9.37 a.m. and I just got back from Target and look, it looks like Ditto took a poop in his litter box. 
that's very good. Maybe he'll uh, be feeling better. So I just got back from Target. I had to return a few things and I bought Ditto a super comfy cat bed. I wanted to find a round one that is similar to the Amazon basic cat beds that the other cats love so much. So I found this one, it's round. Um, the difference is just like the outer walls of it. I really like this one for Ditto because um, can you see it's kind of like a semi cave. The other cats don't like cat caves. They don't like to be in anything that's like a bag. So this one, it's nice and exposed, but it does have this higher side so he could feel safe inside of it while at the same time being exposed. So I'm gonna put this um, over to the side for him. This was $19.99. This is Boots and Barkley. The other thing I picked up were these Refresh cleaning wipes. It says it's a pet-friendly formula. Uh, remove dirt and odor easy cleaning from head to tail so um, I've had similar cat wipes that I've used on the cats in the past um, when they were indoor outdoor cats or when they first came inside just to kind of help them along with their grooming so I bought these and these were like $7.99 Ditto looks very comfortable right now he seems pretty content so I am going to go feed the other cats. I have not given them breakfast yet. I wanted to run to the store uh, quickly before things got busy and I had to wait on all kinds of lines. Oh, and look, he ate the rest of his food. So maybe he does like the rabbit food. He just had to get used to it. I'm gonna go feed the other cats and I'm gonna feed myself. I haven't eaten anything. And then I'll be back in a little while. And I wanna sit in this room um, when I open the door of this crate just to see what, um, Ditto does and uh, how he responds. He might not even come out of the crate while I'm in the room, but I just want to uh, see if he does. So I'm going to have to set aside, you know, a good 30 to 60 minutes just to sit here and kind of observe him. So I need to get some other stuff done. I have a long list of things that I need to do today and I am beyond exhausted from not getting any sleep last night or very little sleep last night. So, um, yeah, today's going to be a very big juggling act. Ditto, you doing okay though, right? Yeah, he's doing okay. Here's Boo. Boo is very concerned about what's going on in his room. And pretty much every time that I leave the recovery room, as I'm now calling it, Boo's in the hallway right outside. So I tell him he's a very good cat to be so concerned and to be so helpful and to keep guard, right? Right, Boo? You're keeping guard on what's going on in there. It is 11 a.m. and Hydrox finally ate some food that I put out for him. That is awesome. I keep telling him that Ditto is okay and that everything is fine. So maybe he's starting to feel a little bit better or maybe he's just super hungry. Since Hydrox is in the mood to eat, I just gave him another half of a can of food. We'll see how he does, and I put rocks around his plate so it doesn't move around. He just ate what I gave him, and I gave him some more. It is 12 p.m. I got the cats fed, I got myself fed, I got all of the plants in the yard watered. They're really drying out because they haven't been watered in the past few days. And I have my computer with me. And I thought I'd sit here and maybe work on some videos or get some work done while I hang out with Ditto. So I'm just about to open this crate and we'll see if he wants to come out. He might want to just stay inside the crate, but we'll see. Okay, Ditto, would you like to come out? Would you like to come out? He's thinking about it. He might not want to. He might be very comfortable. Don't forget he's had since he's had pain medicine and he's had his antibiotic today. So I'm just going to sit here and be quiet and do my work and we'll see what he does.
He might not come out until I leave the room, but I plan on sitting here for at least about a half hour. Hopefully he won't freak out if he does venture out of the crate. I do have the window shut. I just rearranged the room a little bit, so I put the new cat bed right here, pretty much just outside of the crate. So he doesn't have to go far, he just has to go from here to here and I could put some catnip in there if I wanted to but I'm not going to just yet. What are you doing? It's 12.45 p.m. and Ditto has been trying to sleep. He really wants to get some rest. So I've just been sitting here reading a book about uh, natural cat health. So I'm going to grab my book and my computer. I thought I was going to do some work on my computer, but I don't want to disturb him. I want to just keep everything as quiet as I can in here. So I'm going to go grab my stuff. I'm going to leave the room. I'm going to leave the crate open, and we'll see if he, um, if he comes out of the crate. It's about 2 p.m., and the cats usually have a little snack at 2 p.m., so I'm going to give Ditto some food, and I'm going to leave it here right outside of the crate, so if he wants to eat it, he could stick his head out of the crate to eat it. I'm going to take that other, the other paper plate away. I'm going to take it away. It looks like he has a little food on his back because he was probably laying on it so he's been resting nicely in the crate he doesn't really want to move out of it so I'll put the food there he could have it if he wants it he's looking at it and he's thinking about it he is on two medications right now so he might not be acting as he normally would be acting I need to clean out his litter also, but I don't want to disturb him. I was hoping he would move from the crate to a cat bed, and then I would be able to uh, clean the litter without disturbing him. So it looks like he does not want to put any weight on his paw. Oh, look at this, look. The one problem with the paper plates is that they do slide around. He could put his paw on it if he wants to. If he puts his paw on it, it stops it from sliding around. But with it sliding around, it'll make him come farther and farther out. There we go. There we go, ditto. So, it's um, just a little bit of canned food and I hope it's not getting that new cat bed dirty. Let me move it. I'll move it over. Okay? I'll move it over. You okay? You okay? I'll hold the plate for you. Here, you eat it here. Here, I'll hold it. Here. There you go. This grabber that I'm using, um, I got it at a local dollar store. It was like a dollar, and it works great with, with the cats. I have one for outside, and this is the one I keep inside. The cats like to play with it, actually, but it does help 
for example, if Splash is hiding under the bed or something, or in situations like this where a cat may be hesitant to get too close. Okay, it's just a snack, ditto. Just a snack. You'll have more food later, okay? Okay, good job, ditto. I'm trying to catch his drool. Okay. You got everything, I think. Maybe a few crunchies. Good job, Ditto. Good job. Okay. Here, you want this one on the floor? Here, right here. You're gonna go back in your... You're gonna go back in the crate? That's it. You'll have more later, okay? Just a snack. It's just a snack. You're doing very good, Ditto. You're doing very good, Ditto. You're going to go back in your crate. You have that nice blanket to lay on. You want to go in the bed? Here. Want to go in the bed here? There's a nice bed here. Look, it's nice and soft. You decide. You can do whatever you want to do, Ditto. It's your choice, okay? You could lay in the bed or you could lay in the crate. It's your choice. You can choose whatever you feel most comfortable with, okay? I want you to be comfortable and I want you to sleep good. Where would you like to sleep better? I just moved another bed over for him. This is the bed with the blanket in it. He's looking at it. He's looking at it. The thing is, if he uh, if he sleeps in it, I'll have to walk past him, which I hope doesn't disturb him. Okay, so he has chosen to go back into the crate. He's sniffing around. He might be looking for more food. Now, this blanket um, has not been used by any of the other cats. The cats received it as a gift from a viewer. I think it might have been from Sharon. And um, I have had it... Uh, in a closet. I have like a cat shelf in my closet with blankets and stuff. He can use it if he wants to. He's definitely thinking about it. He's smelling it. Maybe he'll go in the other bed. I have two cameras set up right now. One is a webcam recording, the other is a security camera. The security camera I could check from my app uh, on my phone, and then the webcam is just recording nonstop so I can have a record of his progress. Go in the bed, go in the bed, ditto, it's for you. Yeah, go in. That's the one I want you to lay in, okay? I bought it just for you. It's nice and cozy, isn't it? It smells like Target. It's for you, Ditto. It's yours. Yeah, it's yours. It's your, your very own bed. It's your very own bed. You can use it. You can use it. You can lay in there. 
I could always put some catnip in there, but I just wanted to see how he would react to both of these without any catnip or enticement. You're okay. I know you might want more food, but we're going to wait till dinner, okay? I need to make sure he's hungry for dinner, so I don't want to um, give him too much of a snack right now. Okay, you want a little bit more food, Ditto? Want a little bit more? Okay, I'll give you a little bit more. Okay? I just gave him a little bit more of the food. This is um, it's salmon and shrimp. I don't remember the, what kind of food it is, though. It's one of the small cans. And I usually divide the small can into four, and I give uh, the cats each a fourth of the can. I give him an eighth of a can. Let me hold your plate. Well, he has a very good appetite, which is a very good sign. Okay, Ditto, you did good. You did very good. Okay? Very good. You ate it all, Ditto. That's it. That's your snack, okay? That's your snack. Good job. Good job. Yeah, good job. Now you can go and lay in a bed. You have three beds to choose from. Okay? Three beds to choose from. They're all over here. Okay? And I'll leave you here so you can relax. You're doing very good. You're a very good patient. Okay? Okay. Good job, Ditto. Good job. I'll take these out. Okay? He's going to go back in. So when Stella, Splash, and Simba first came in the house, um, I let them uh, in the house and downstairs. The only part of the house they were allowed was downstairs, and they were indoor-outdoor cats for several months before uh, becoming permanently indoor cats. Now, when Stella and Simba went to the vet to get spayed and neutered, um, from that day forward, they were permanently indoor cats, and that was like, um, that was January of 2017. Stella became an indoor cat December 29th, 2016, because that's when she went in heat. And um, from that time on, I kept her away from any other cat. Um, and then um, when I brought her to the vet to get uh, spayed, I brought Simba at the same time because he sat in a carrier and I was like, okay, you want to go? I shut the carrier and I took him and thankfully um, I was able to get him neutered the same day. And since then, they have never been outside again. They've been completely inside cats. And this is the room that I put Simba in for him to recover. Um, so when they got back from the vet, the vet said to keep them from jumping up and down and to keep them from going up and down steps and to keep them from climbing. So I kept Stella upstairs and that way she didn't have to go up and down the steps. And I kept Simba in this room. And Simba did not want to be in this room. He threw a fit. And the reason why is because Splash was downstairs and because the cats had already been downstairs and they had the run of the place. So he's like, why do I want to be in this room when my brother's downstairs and I could have the run of the place? So it was very hard to keep him contained in this room. I couldn't contain him. I was able to contain Splash in this room for about a day, maybe like 24 hours after uh, he got neutered. Uh, but then after that, he didn't want to be in this room either. Now, when Boo uh, came into the house, I brought him to the vet because he was limping also and he had a fever and he wasn't acting like his normal self. And when he got back from the vet, he came into this room. He was in a carrier. I did not have this pet crate at all. So when I let him out of the carrier, 
he tried to jump out of a window. Like he flew toward the windows. If the windows weren't shut, he would have tried to get out the windows. I then had to calm him down. And then once he was calmed down, um, he had pretty much the run of this room and things went okay. Um, he adapted to inside life really, really well. Um, however, with Boo, um, he was a lot more advanced than Ditto was. When Boo was living outside, I could pet him, I could brush him, um, you know, he would rub up against me. He was very friendly toward me. Uh, him and I had a good relationship. Whereas with Ditto, he doesn't let me pet him that much. He's rubbed up against me a few times. He's headbutted me a few times, but it's nothing like um, how friendly Boo was to me. Boo used to love to play. I would play with Boo almost every day. I'd have playtime outside with Boo and training sessions with Boo, and I haven't really had that with uh, Ditto, uh, just because he hasn't been interested. I've tried to play with him, and he hasn't really been interested, and we could see there's two toys in this crate, and he's really not interested. So when I knew Ditto was gonna have to use this room as a recovery room, I wanted to get this pet crate and see if he would be able to adjust to the pet crate. Um, because it's usually what they're first accustomed to, um, that they feel comfortable with and they get used to. So, you know, thinking back to Boo, Boo spent 60 days in this room. He was on a two month quarantine. The vet said to keep him quarantined for two months until I was absolutely sure he did not have feline leukemia. A lot of people were saying that's crazy, you don't need to keep him separated for that long, but I was just doing what the vet said. So that's what I did. I figured it couldn't hurt anything. Boo could just have more training. Um, so um, he did spend some of that time outside of this room, but he was separated from the other cats for 60 days. Um, but he did spend quite a few weeks in this room and he loved it. He was absolutely happy with it. Um, so now that Ditto has come in and he's using this pet crate, it could be a similar situation where uh, he feels safe in the pet crate. He's happy in the pet crate. Obviously, he doesn't have to stay in it. The door's open. But if the pet crate is his safe place because this is what he's been accustomed to for his first 24 hours inside, then I'm okay with that. Um, he does have options. There's other beds in this room. There's like that cardboard cat scratcher he could go in. Um, there's a shelf he could look out the window. One other thing, I did want to bring a cardboard box in here because sometimes cats just like the safety of a cardboard box. Uh, but he could go underneath the day sofa that I'm sitting on. There's plenty of little hidey holes if he wants to hide. Um, but so far he just seems to be very, very comfortable in his crate. Uh, he had a snack. So I'm going to go outside now. I'm going to give the other cats their snack and then I am just going to get on with my afternoon. And I'll check in with him a little bit later. I still need to clean up the litter, give him some fresh water. Usually do that um, in the early evening. So, Okay, Ditto, I hope you're doing well. I hope you like your snack, and I'll see you later. It's 4.45 p.m. right now, and I just wanted to check in on Ditto on the security camera. And look at what's going on. Look, he's using the new bed. So a few minutes ago, he went from the crate to... The new bed, I'm so happy he likes it. It's 5.46 p.m. and look at what's going on here. Ditto moved from the round cat bed to the day sofa. So that's another reason why I wanted to sleep there last night and I spent some time sitting on it today. So he knows that you, know, you can go and you can sit on it and lay on it. So hopefully he'll get comfortable. Hello, Ditto. I gotta clean your water, okay? Listen, I'm gonna clean your water and I'm gonna do your litter so you stay right here. You don't go anywhere, you stay right here. I just gave Ditto some fresh water and I found this tray uh, downstairs and I put the water on this tray outside of the crate and I'll put his dinner next to it just to give him some more room in the crate. It's 8.11 p.m. Look at Simba. He's decided to sit down in that little kitten litter box. I just put some food on the tray for Ditto. And it has one of the capsules of painkillers um, in it. I mixed it in. It's just one scoop of homemade raw food with some water. I want him to eat it. I'm not giving him dinner on the day sofa. 
he can eat it on the tray. He does drool when he eats. He gets a little bit messy and that's why I don't want to have to just start cleaning that up off this day so far. Now everything that's on this, the pillowcases, the sheets, I could throw it in the laundry, but I'd rather that he, um, he eats on the tray. I don't want him getting used to eating on the sofa. All right, so I lied. I ended up putting the tray up here. He was trying to meow at me. He's, he still does not have his meow back yet. What I did notice today is that um, like an hour or two ago, his eyes started looking brighter. And I was wondering if it's because like the pain medicine wore off. You know, pain medicine can make people, um, you know, it could just dull the senses a lot of the times. And a lot of times you can, you know, look at someone's face and see, oh, they're on, uh, they're on some kind of medication or drugs or whatever. So um, I kind of felt like maybe that might be the case with Ditto, but I'm going to keep him on the pain meds um, at least, um, at least another day or possibly two, like minimum. I might keep him on like the full 10 days. We're, we're just going to take one day at a time. That's it. I'm just going to see how it goes. All right, good job, Ditto. Good job. I have more. I could give you some more. Let me give you more. I'll give you some more, okay? Okay? All right, let me get you some more. I just gave Ditto some more food and he's having another taste test today. So he has some homemade raw food on the left, which I know he likes. And then um, some Stella and Chewy's chicken on the right. So we'll see what he eats. Everything that I'm giving him is like a soft food. The homemade food does have bones in it, some small bone pieces, but I don't think he's really chewing it. I think he's really just kind of licking it up and swallowing it. Now, I am keeping my distance from him because I don't want to make him uncomfortable. I'm not trying to pet him. I'm not trying to get too close to him. Uh, if I need to grab a plate or, you know, move a water bowl or something like that, um, I'm being very slow and cautious. I don't want to scare him. Today is day two, so this is all very new for him. I don't want to do too many new things too fast. I'm definitely not trying to pet him and you know I don't want to really get too much in his personal space. Ditto really enjoyed his food. I've been kind of rotating the plate because he'll eat it and then he'll stop and then I'll rotate it so the food's closer to him. And then um, I've just been trying to make it easier for him. But he enjoyed the food. There's a few pieces left and I told him that's it for his dinner. And later on we can have a snack. So um, that's it. I'm not going to leave this up here because I don't want him spilling water all over the day sofa or anything. He had a very good dinner. There's a lot of liquid in the food that I gave him. I did add extra water. So I'm not worrying about him drinking. There was like three massive pea clumps in the litter box, so um, I'm not worried about uh, him drinking uh, water or getting enough liquid. He's getting a good amount of liquid in the food that I'm giving him. So um, yeah, so I'm going to put the tray on the floor and then I am going to have my dinner because everyone else now has been fed and uh, I'm very hungry. I just gave Ditto still his tablet. I put some squirrel videos on for him. It's a 10 hour video, so hopefully he'll watch it. He jumped down to eat some food, so that's good. We're gonna have some more food later, Ditto. 
I'm going to have some more food later, okay? Go back up on the sofa and watch your videos. I give you some videos to watch, okay? I just gave Hijack some more food because he ate everything that was on the plate. And he uh, was resting on one of the patio chairs. I guess that's where he's been sleeping lately. It's almost 10 o'clock and I just gave Ditto a snack. He's getting a few crunchies and a little bit of canned food. I don't know if he's going to eat it, but I just gave it to him. He's been laying on the day sofa. If you want it, you could eat it, Ditto. If not, I'll put it on your tray, okay? Okay? I'm saying goodnight to Ditto. I'm getting him ready for bed. So he has some squirrel videos on the tablet. And he's relaxing on the day sofa. He has water and snacks on the floor. Looks like he used the uh, bigger litter box that's in the room today. So, uh, yeah, it looks like he's comfortable. I mean, come on. What feral cat wouldn't be comfortable in this situation? I could be opening up a hotel for cats. It is 8.45 a.m. Good morning, Ditto. How are you? He slept on this day sofa all night. I mean, I don't know how much sleep he got, but he spent his whole night on the day sofa. He did not eat his snack. I just gave Ditto his food. He's getting a scoop of the homemade raw food, and I put his medicine in it, so he's getting the Veriflux and the Gabapentin, so the antibiotic and the painkiller. And it looks like he still doesn't want to put any weight on that leg. But it looks like he has a very good appetite. He's enjoying his food. If he eats all this, then I'll give him some more food. In the meantime, I'm going to go and give the other cats their food. It is 8.49 a.m. I just came downstairs and found this. And at first I was like, what is that? I have no idea what it is. It looks like a wheel from something. But it's not. And I don't know how it got here. It's the top of the scratching pole. This is a floor-to-ceiling scratching pole. So this goes on top and it goes inside the inside of this and it, um, you know, it kind of um, has a spring mechanism that uh, keeps it firm um, between the ceiling and the floor and I don't know how this got out. Okay, I just put it back in and the only thing that makes any sense to me is if a cat jumped on this pole or something and actually drag the pole this way because there are some scuff marks. If this pole was dragged that way, then it would have popped out and uh, fallen over. So I think that's what happened. It's 8.55 a.m. I thought I might have heard some jumping in this room. You've been jumping around, Ditto? He ate all of his breakfast, so I'm going to go give him some more food. I just gave Ditto one of the Primal Raw Rabbit Nuggets and one of the Stella and Chewy's Chicken Patties. And we'll see how he likes those. Um, so for the first time, I noticed he had an interest in what's outside of the door to this room. So when I opened the door to walk out, he was like intensely looking to see what's through the door. Um, thankfully, the cats are all downstairs eating. So um, I have to be cautious. I don't want any cats jumping through the open door while I have it open. So I have to be quick about it. And if I see any of the other cats right outside, I don't want them jumping the gate. They've done it in the past. I don't need that. Um, I'm just trying to avoid conflict between the cats and, um, you know, trying to avoid any kind of fights. Boo's a fighter. Uh, Ditto's a fighter. So, um, you know, the two of them are both FIV positive. So if there was a fight between the two of them, um, nothing's going to be um, transmitted. I just, you know, let's be cautious with the other cats. I don't like how he's not putting weight on his paw. He's like not even trying to put weight on that leg. Okay, I just came in to check on Ditto. He jumped back onto the day sofa. And this is what he did with his food. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna move his plate around and oh, I just found an ant. There's an ant on the tray, so. 
I gotta check on this. So the battery on the tablet died because I guess it was running all night. I just put squirrels on the TV for him. And he's pretty engrossed in the squirrel video. He's never seen, like, TV before. I mean, he saw the tablet yesterday, but it's much smaller. So hopefully this will uh, keep his attention for a little while. Ditto wanted some crunchies, so I just gave him a tablespoon of the Blue Wilderness Salmon Dry Cat Food. The other cats um, just had a little tiny bit. Boo likes to have it sprinkled on his breakfast, and he likes to finish his breakfast um, in the living room, which is not far from here, pretty much just across the hall. So um, I don't know if Ditto smelled them or heard them or what, but um, it seems that that's what he wanted. Maybe he missed them because he did eat them out of the automatic feeder outside. He ate all the crunchies, and then I moved the plate toward him again, and he went toward the Stella and Chewy's chicken patty. And so he seems he likes that better than the rabbit, so that's good to know. He's looking for more crunchies, but that's it. That's all he's getting. He had a very good portion of food today. Good job, Ditto. You are doing so well, Ditto. You are such a good patient. Yeah. Ditto has just discovered that he can go underneath the day sofa. This is where Boo likes to hang out when he's afraid of something. Oh look, he just put he just put a little bit of weight on his paw. That's good. Um Okay, I'm gonna leave you alone, Ditto. I'll leave you alone. I'll come back later, okay? You relax. You relax. Ditto, you're so pretty. Ditto must be feeling a little bit better because I heard him howling um, from the other room. So I just brought in a plate of crunchies and he was also hanging out by the door, which I don't want to see happening because it makes it really hard for me to go in and out when I have cats on both sides of the door and I don't need him trying to escape from this room. So I put the plate under here right now, but I'm going to move the plate over to the tray just so he doesn't get used to eating under here. You're doing okay, Ditto. Everything is okay, Ditto, okay? It's all okay. Everything is okay. I'm going to leave this plate of food here. I'm going to hope it does not attract a whole bunch of ants. I'm trying to get Hydrox fed. I have not eaten anything this morning. I have not gotten ready for my day yet. This is a lot of work. It's 10.03 a.m. I'm checking on Ditto. He's hanging out under the day sofa, so I've decided to turn off the TV in case that is kind of bothering him. So that's what I'm going to do. Boo. 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 Boo boo. Bibi. Baba. Bibi baba. Bibi baba boo boo. Boo boo bibi baby. Baba. Bibi. Boo boo baby baba boo boo. Boo boo baba bibi baby. Boo boo baby baba boo boo. Boo boo baby bibi baba. Baba. Biba boo. Biba boo. Boo boo bibi. Boo boo baba. Baba bibi baba boo boo. Baba boo boo. Baba boo boo. Bibi baba. Bibi baba boo boo. Bibi baba boo boo. Bibi baba boo boo. It's about 2.10 p.m. And Ditto came back up on top of this day sofa a little while ago. I was watching on the security camera. I saw the footage. Um, so he was resting underneath the day sofa most of the morning. And it's snack time for the cats. They've been giving them a snack around 2 p.m. So I want to see if I could give Ditto a squeeze up. And I want to see if he'll eat it out of my hand. So um, this could go good or bad. And... He might reject it. He might accept it. We'll see what happens. Ditto, would you like a squeeze up? Would you like a squeeze up? Here. Would you like to eat it?
Would you like to eat it? You want to eat it? You can lick it. Want to lick it? Would you like to eat it? Here. Want to lick it? Tastes good, right? It's really hard for me to hold the camera and give him the squeeze up at the same time. You sneezing? Would you like to squeeze up? Okay. It's actually a chew roux. I'm just used to calling them squeeze up. So I put the rest on the plate. He did really well. He ate some of it out of my hand. The natural instinct of a feral cat is to swat, so I'm surprised he didn't. I'm trying to get a look at his leg right now. I was in the Dollar Tree earlier today and they had these new wand toys in. I was hoping he might like it. Boo loved these. When Boo was living outside, he absolutely loved these, but I'd probably want to cut the bell off of this. Um, I don't know if he'll like it or not. He might be afraid of it, but I'll just like leave it here. It is 4 p.m. and I have about 22 pounds of chicken and turkey and chicken hearts and chicken livers and giblets uh, defrosting on the kitchen table. I'm waiting for everything to uh, get soft enough so I could start making some homemade raw food for the cats. So with Ditto inside and eating about six scoops of the homemade raw food a day, I'm going through it a lot faster than I was when it was just uh, the other cats eating it and then Ditto having maybe like two scoops a day outside. They're also getting um, canned food outside and he was also eating out of the automatic feeder. When he was outside, he was not eating as much as he's eating now uh, in the house. Um, he also hunted you know, in the woods. He was often in the woods, so I'm sure uh, he was very happy eating whatever prey he caught. But, um, so this will make a lot of food. Hopefully it'll last about two or three weeks. And, and I definitely have to thank Pat again for sending us the meat grinder that I use. It's a really powerful meat grinder. I don't know if you could call it industrial strength or commercial strength, but it's really strong. It grinds up all the bones. And there's no way that I would be able to buy this much raw food uh, around here. It's not available in the stores. They don't have enough food in, available in the stores. Um, right now, there's like one pet store um, within like a 15 minute drive um, that actually stocks a good amount of raw food for the cats. The others only stock like a few small bags and the cats would go through that in like a day. So um, thankfully with this grinder, I'm able to do this and I'm able to feed the cats raw food. Um, Without the grinder, there would be no way because you can't order it online. So uh, thanks again, Pat. It's 4.25 p.m. I want to check on Ditto, see what he's doing. There's Ditto. He's laying on the day sofa. Get some sleep, Ditto, okay? You're a good boy. Here's Stella. She's smelling the air. Here's Boo, he's laying on the bed. Hey, Boo. There's Splash. He's in the penthouse. And here's Simba. He's hanging out on this cat tower. We just had some rain come through, which is weird because it was not supposed to rain today. How you doing, Simba? It is 7.26 p.m. And I just came in to Ditto's room to clean the litter boxes. I just gave him some fresh water a little while ago. He is making a big mess on this day so far. 
Um, so what I would like to do is maybe put a large towel underneath um, these linen sheets um, because I see that they're already stained and I'm hoping the stains don't go through to uh, the cushions underneath. So that's why um, when I have a chance I want to put some uh, towels on it. I don't know when I'm going to do that though because I have to do it when Ditto's not going to be freaked out and when he's not sitting on it actually. How are you doing, Ditto? Are you feeling better? You feeling any better right now? Would you like a painkiller tonight? You seem to be more awake when you don't have a painkiller. And he doesn't seem like he's in that much pain. I mean, his arm is still a bit swollen. It looks like maybe it came down a little bit. He's been on the painkillers every 12 hours. So I'm debating whether I give him an, a painkiller today and then maybe tomorrow see if I could Maybe only give him one instead of two. I don't know. I'm just really taking it minute by minute. Another thing I wanted to point out is that I am using a different litter scoop uh, than the litter scoop I use for the other cat. So I'm keeping this litter scoop in here in this little bucket so I can use it on these litter boxes. And then these are the last ones that I scoop out before I take everything out to the garbage. So I just want to Make sure there's no cross contamination in case there's any any kind of health issues that possibly could be transmitted via uh, litter. And here is the carrier that the animal hospital gave to Ditto. And I'm actually thinking of putting this on the floor, maybe putting a nice blanket or towel inside of it and putting it on the floor. So if Ditto wants to hang out inside of it, he can. And it would also maybe get him used to being in a carrier uh, more than just um, laying on the bed but he really likes to lay on that day sofa okay i just found an old white towel and i just put it on top of these sheets that are on this day sofa so looks cleaner and hopefully it'll be more absorbent for anything um, that might drip off of him and i should have thought of that sooner but i'm glad i thought of it now it's about 8 10 p.m right now and i just gave ditto his dinner I gave Hydrox food, the inside cats all ate their food, and I saved Ditto for last. I did put his gabapentin in it, which is a painkiller. It's also an anti-anxiety med for cats. I was reading up on it as I was waiting for the other cats to eat. And some people give it to their cats like two or three hours before a vet appointment. It's supposed to definitely help with anxiety. So. Since Boo came home with a three-day painkiller in his system, I'm keeping Ditto on it for three days. I'll give it to him tomorrow, and then tomorrow night maybe I'll skip it. I want him not to be drugged up while he's in the house, or maybe I'll just keep him on it for a week. Tomorrow's day four. I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud right now. He's enjoying his food. That's one scoop of homemade raw food with water mixed in. So when he's done with that, I'll put another plate together for him. I want to give him a small portion at first to make sure that he gets all the medicine. And I gave it to him on top of the day sofa where he was sitting so he doesn't have to jump down and put undue stress on his arm. Okay, Ditto, you want more? I just gave Ditto his second plate of food. On the left side, which he is eating, he has homemade raw food. On the right side, he has a Stella and Chewy's chicken patty. It's a very good appetite again today. Ditto ate all of his food. He's a very good boy. So I am going to put the plate aside and then in a couple hours when the rest of the cats have their crunchy snack, I'll give him a snack also. I have a special surprise for him today. We got a special treat for you, Ditto, okay? So let me put the plate aside and I want to go put the lamp on, okay? 
I'm going to put the lamp on and shut off this big light because it's too bright. It's getting dark out, okay? Okay, you could hide under the day sofa if you want. Go ahead, and you hide under there. There he goes, he's going to hide under there. Boo's favorite hiding place also. It's 9.45 p.m. Let's check in on Ditto. You think he looks comfortable? He's hanging out on the couch and he's watching chipmunk and squirrel videos on the TV. It's 11.20 p.m. And I just gave Ditto a snack. I gave him a tablespoon of crunchies. And I gave him a churro. He's been relaxing in the room. He loves this day sofa. And there are some squirrel and chipmunk videos on the TV. You don't want your food? It's a snack. I know it's a little late. I normally try to give them their snack around 10, but I've been making the homemade raw food for the cats, and I still have to clean up. But You don't want it? You want me to turn it around for you? Okay, so after staring at me for a few minutes, now he's eating the churu. The painkiller kind of makes him spacey. And it is very, it's very dimly lit in here. I do have the exposure cranked on the camera. I'm going to stand here while he eats and then when he's done, I'm going to turn the videos off so he could get some rest. Boo, Stella, Splash, and Simba had some crunchies while I was in the recovery room with Ditto. And Ditto just uh, ate a churu and a tablespoon of crunchies. He enjoyed them all very much. And then um, I tried playing with him with the wand toy for a little bit. And he really doesn't really know how to interact with it or what it is. So what I then did with it is I just very gently brushed it on his back. Just to get him used to being touched with something. Um, so not with the stick, not with the wand part, but with like the soft uh, ribbon part and like the wormy part. I just gently brushed it along his back, like there's Stella. So let's say I just went like brushed it on his back, brushed it on his back, just very gently. But it did freak him out a bit and he wanted to hide under the day sofa. So I stopped and I told him he didn't have to hide. So he actually didn't go under the day sofa. He almost did, but then he, uh, he, uh, he thought better and he just uh, stayed on the floor. Um, I shut the TV off so he doesn't have any videos on and there's only one small night light on so I, hopefully he'll get some good rest and we have just finished day three so um, so far so good. Ditto's been on such amazing good behavior it's really incredible and the cats have also been on really amazing behavior. It's like they know. I mean, I've been telling them what's going on, but it's like they really know, right, Stella? Or right, Splash. And Boo has been really, really the best because he uh, sacrificed the most, you know, for for Ditto to be in his room. Right, Boo? Yeah. Boo says he used that room when his leg, uh, you know, was sore and he was limping and he had an infection and now, now Ditto's using it. So Boo says he knows what that's like.
It is 8.20 a.m. Still just had a good scratch on the scratching ramp. There's Splash, he's still relaxing in bed. Boo's watching chipmunk videos on the TV. And here's Simba. He's looking out the window, seeing what's going on this morning. He was smelling the air before, but uh, then he moved over here. Here's Ditto. He's resting comfortably on the day sofa. And I'm gonna open up the curtains and let some light into this room. It's pretty dark. I hope he had a good night. I've had the window very slightly open overnight just to keep some fresh air in here. Um, he is an outside cat, so he's used to smelling the air outside, so I wanted to make sure he had plenty of air to smell. Good morning, Ditto. Are you feeling any better today? You feeling any better today? Have you been playing with your toy at all? No? So it looks like he might have used the litter box, which is a good thing. Do you think he would let me sit down with him if I sit on like this far corner? Can I sit down with you, Ditto? If I move really slow? If I move really slow? Oh, look at that. I could sit down with you. That's awesome, Ditto. Yeah, I was afraid I was going to scare him. Um, yeah, he's been drooling and leaving some dirt on the, uh, the towel. That's okay. Well, at least you didn't hide under the day sofa, but see, I'm not going to hurt you. I'm not going to hurt you. We're going to eat soon, okay? We're going to eat soon, a little bit later, maybe around 9 a.m. today. I still have to get ready for my day, and I'm waiting for the, the, the food to come to room temperature. Do you think Ditto would like to play? Would you like to play, Ditto? No? Okay, I'll leave him alone. It's 9 a.m. And I just gave Ditto the first part of his breakfast. He's having a scoop of the fresh homemade raw food with some water mixed in and his meds. He's getting his Veriflox and his Gabapentin. And I gave it to him on the day so far just so he doesn't have to jump down. I will um, give him the rest of his breakfast after I feed the inside cats. I just want to make sure he eats his meds. So I'll be back. Ditto finished all of his food. So I just gave him two more scoops of the new homemade raw food and it looks like he's walking much better on his, on his leg. That is really great. So hopefully he'll finish what's on his plate. It looks like a lot of food, but I mixed in quite a bit of water, so it's actually kind of soupy. I haven't noticed that he's been drinking all that much, although now it does look like he drank some of the water out of the water bowl. Um, so for the homemade raw food that I made yesterday, um, I used about 20 pounds of poultry parts. Um, it was chicken drumsticks, uh, chicken thighs, um, some turkey thighs. Then I also had a few boneless chicken breasts, just a few to kind of uh, round it out a little bit. And I grind them all up with bone. So I grind up the bone, I grind up the skin, and grind up everything. And then I add supplements to it. I add salmon oil. I add a bunch of wheatgrass powder. Um, I added some nettle. Um, which is a herb that's full of minerals. Also a little bit of alfalfa, which is another herb full of minerals. Um, I add some kelp for minerals and iodine. And what else did I add? I add some vitamin E. I added a bunch of vitamin B. I want to make sure that the cats get um, really good nutrition. Um... I do change up the recipe uh, pretty much every time I make it, just depending on how much meat I have and um, what's available. Oh, also chicken hearts, which is very important to make sure that there's enough taurine. I mean, there's taurine in meat, um, in the meat itself, but there's more taurine in the organ meats. So I add, I think about a pound of chicken hearts, about a pound of chicken livers, and I also had some chicken giblets. Uh, that I added. I just try to create something that's as similar as I can get to like a whole prey model or what they would be eating in nature if the cats were outside eating a whole bird. 
Um, they'd be eating the contents of the stomach and the uh, intestinal tract and, you know, getting um, some pre-digested plant protein from that. They also chew on grass when they're outside, which is why I add um, the wheatgrass powder. You know, when cats are living in nature, they're not eating a whole lot of fruits and vegetables, but they are chewing on plants. They do eat plants, which is why I never understood why commercial cat food is going to put in, like, peas and carrots. Cats don't eat peas and carrots when they're living in nature. They do eat grasses, which is why I add the wheatgrass. Um, and they do eat other plants. They love catnip, for example. They, there are some plants that they like, which is why, um, you know, I do supplement with with herbs. Look at that. Ditto really enjoyed his meal. Now, in order to grind the meat with the bones, I do have to use a very strong um, kind of like butcher quality grinder. It was given to the cats from a viewer a few years ago. Thank you, Pat, so much. And um, it's been super helpful because there's no way that I could buy all the food um, that I'm feeding the cats right now. The stores just don't have it in stock. All right. Ditto really enjoyed his breakfast. So another thing that I want to do today is see if I could put another chair in this room. Somewhere I should be able to find a folding chair. I think I have a folding chair in the garage. And I want to put it by the shelves by the window. So um, right now it's a pretty big jump onto the top of the shelves. But if I put a chair there, um, it's kind of like two smaller jumps. And he could look out if he wants to. Also, it gives me somewhere to sit. So I could spend some time in here with Ditto other than sitting on the floor. Good job, Ditto. You're such a good patient. What a good boy. Ditto, did you enjoy your breakfast? Ditto, did you enjoy your breakfast? Was it good? Ditto says he really enjoys it. So he had his meds around 9 a.m. today. And what I was reading about the gabapentin is that it really works best um, like two and a half to three hours after the cat has it. So what I'm going to try to do today is come in here around noon which would be three hours after he has it, and see if I can pet him. I want to see if I could do that, and that would be a good time to do that. I don't want to do too much too fast. We tried playing with toys this morning. It didn't work. He was afraid of them. So, um, yeah, we'll see if I could maybe pet him. I've been able to pet him when he's outside, but he's been more comfortable outside. You know, that's his home turf, and he's still, still pretty anxious in here. Not that anxious. I mean, he's been relaxing a lot, but... You know, overall, I don't want to move him, you know, too fast. I don't want to push him too fast. Right now, Ditto is hiding under the day sofa. And the reason why is because I was asking him if he wanted to watch, like, chipmunk videos or mouse videos. And I spoke a little too loud. Like, I got a little bit too excited with how I was speaking to him and it scared him. So when dealing with the feral cat, always make sure you're calm and you speak in a very calm and relaxed tone of voice. Even if you get really happy at the progress that they're making, you still have to be calm, slow, and relaxed because if you get really happy, this can happen where he could go into hiding again. Okay, Ditto, I'll leave you alone, okay? I'll be back in a little while. It's 9.45, and I put some food out for Hydrox. Hydrox was just hanging out by the back door. And uh, I put some food out for him, and he walked away, and he was just hanging out by the back door again, and he's really not interested in the food. Right now there's a fly eating it. Um, but I just wanted to mention... Uh, that Hydrex is doing well, and I wanted to talk about the difficulties of um, making sure an outside cat gets medicine. So, with Ditto being inside right now, it's really easy to give him medicine when he needs to take medicine because his entire environment is being controlled. I'm controlling what food he gets, when he gets it, 
Um, I'm controlling his fresh water. I'm controlling his litter boxes. I'm controlling um, the temperature and you know the airflow in that room. Um, I'm controlling his comfort. So everything is under my control. With an outside cat like Hydrox, if I was to, let's say, put some antibiotics in his food, um, there's no guarantee he's going to eat it. So if, let's say I would have put some antibiotics in his food right now, his breakfast. Right now he hasn't eaten it, and chances are he might not eat it. There's a lot of factors that go involved with an outside cat. So um, with Hydrox, you know, he could be out hunting. Um, now that the weather's warmer, he has not been hanging around the patio all day. I have no idea where he was yesterday. Uh, he did come around uh, around dinner time, and uh, I think he ate some food around dinner time. But he does not eat on a set schedule. Even though I put food out, sometimes he doesn't eat it, which is why I only put a little bit of food out today, because I said if he eats that, I'll give him more, um, and he hasn't eaten it so far. Also, I do have the automatic feeder, so if I was to want to administer some kind of medications to Hydrox, I would have to shut off the automatic feeder, so that is not available to him. But he could also be eating some kind of food left out at one of the neighbor's houses. I have no idea how many other people around here leave food out for the cats. Um, so there's all different variables. So even if I said to the vet, um, you know, can I get a prescription of antibiotics for Hydrox? Let's put him on for 10 days, like Ditto's on for 10 days right now. I would have totally wasted uh, the dosage that I just put outside for him. Um, so without being able to control um, all of the variables as to, okay, this is the only food he's eating, and this is the only time he's eating, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of the medication would probably go to waste uh, in uneaten food. So I just wanted to point that out. It's much easier to deal with a cat when they are in a recovery room than when they are outside just living their lives. Especially when they're just steps away from woods with lots of small rodents and birds and all kinds of things to hunt. It's about 12.45 p.m. right now and I just brought this folding chair into the room here. And I have it right in front of this shelf. And that way I can sit on it and hang out with Ditto. And also if he wants to use it kind of like as a step, um, he could jump onto it and then jump onto the shelf. Um, I also put that basket with the blanket underneath it. If he wants to use it, he might like to use that. Here he is right now. He's resting on the day sofa. He looks very good. Right, Ditto? Gonna hang out with you for a little while, okay? You okay? I'm not gonna try to pet him right away or anything like that. I just walked into the room with the chair, so he's a little freaked out by it. I'm gonna sit on the chair for a while. I've been sitting here about five minutes, and Ditto has been enjoying the mouse videos that are on the TV. He's actually been watching them. He also sounds a bit congested. Or else he's kind of kind of making like snoring noises. See, he's watching the videos. Hopefully the congestion will clear up over time. I have a snacky mouse for Ditto. This is a Temptation Snacky Mouse. I believe George Senda sent this to the cats. And um, I haven't used it yet. And I thought it would be a good gift for Ditto. I could give him a Snacky Mouse. So it's good that this hasn't been used by any other cats because I don't want him to reject it by smelling another cat on it. So um, I've put some dry cat food in here. Um, I don't know what kind of dry cat food this is. This was just some leftover dry cat food I had in a Ziploc bag. So I'm going to give this to Ditto and let's see if he could figure out how to get the cat food out of it. There's food in that, Ditto. There's some dry food in that. Can you smell the food? Yeah, you smell it? 
You gonna be able to get it out? God bless you, Ditto. Was that a sneeze? It looks like the mouse video ended and now there's bird videos on the TV. So I'll leave him here with the snacky mouse. I'll come back in a little bit and we'll see if it's where we left it or if he got any of the, the little snacks out. There's some snacks in there, ditto. I just held it up to his nose so he could smell it and he smelled it. But we have to remember everything is brand new for him. So, you know. It takes time to get adjusted and to get used to things and to figure things out. And he's also on two medications, so that affects things too. So I'm going to let him be for a while. And I'll come back unless he starts using the snacky mouse now, and then I'll stay here and film some. So originally my plan was to try to pet him right about now, but... What I think I'm going to do instead is look to see if I have any extra brushes in the house. Boo really responded well to being brushed. And um, I'd like to see if Ditto responds well to being brushed also. And he might be afraid of it. But if he tries to attack it, at least he'll attack the brush and not my hand. So, not that I think he's going to attack me, but... It's better to be cautious and to start slow than to move too fast. He's watching the birds again. It is 1.25 p.m. I was just about to go outside and look who's hanging out by the door. I don't want to step on him. He's hanging out in the sun. Maybe I'll go out the other door and walk around. i got to water all the plants because it's supposed to be nice and sunny today. And I want to get some sun also. I want to relax in the sun, right Simba? It's 1.41 p.m. now. I'm just checking on Ditto. Looks like he hasn't gotten his treats out of his mouse yet. You want it? There's treats in there. You can get them out. Okay. It's 2.11 p.m. All of the other cats in the house have been napping for hours now. And Ditto's pretty much wide awake all the time. I really wish he'd get more sleep, but maybe he's been a feral cat for so long that he doesn't know how to get any deep sleep. So I, I just brought a churu in here. This is a tuna with scallop recipe churu. I thought he might like it. I'm going to see if he can eat it out of my hand like he did yesterday. Do you remember Ditto? Yeah. It's food, here. It's food. Wanna eat? Here. Oh, you wanna eat on the floor? Here. Here. Okay, he's afraid. So I've been sitting on the floor for a few minutes holding the churu and he's afraid of it and he's under the day sofa. So I just uh, squeeze it onto this paper plate and I'm just gonna leave it here. I'll leave the room and I'll let him enjoy it and I'll be back in a little while. It is 7.55 p.m. and I just gave Ditto some fresh water and I cleaned out the litter boxes. He had used both of the litter boxes to do number one and number two and I just gave him two scoops of homemade raw food with a little water mixed in so hopefully he'll eat that. I did not put his pain medicine on it. I want to see how he does tonight without the gabapentin so he had it this morning it lasts about 12 hours so it's usually around now that I start noticing a difference that he seems more alert and his eyes are brighter and he seems more like himself so I'm just gonna you know see how he's doing maybe I'll give it to him during the day and then um, not at night just kind of maybe taper him off instead of twice a day just once a day for a while and then eventually off completely
All right, I'm gonna go feed the other cats and I'll be back. It is 8.19 p.m. I got the other cats fed. I had to watch Boo when he eats because he likes me to watch him when he eats. And look at this, Ditto ate all this food. Would you like some more food, Ditto? You want me to give you another scoop? Okay, I'll go get you some more food, okay? He's eating another scoop of homemade raw food and that's it, that's what he's getting. And I'm gonna start getting this room ready for, for nighttime. I can put the little night light on. Shut down the, uh, there's a camera on him right now, I'm gonna shut it down. And just kind of dim the lights, shut the curtains. Ditto finished all his food. He licked the second plate clean. And he's looking around right now and he's watching me and his eyes are wide open and he's alert. So it's really nice that he's not drugged up right now. So we'll see how everything goes. I'm going to take his plate away. It's about 10 p.m. Here's Ditto. He's watching woodpecker videos on TV. I just brought him a snack plate. So there's a few crunchies on this plate. There's a few of the freeze-dried raw bites. Uh, there's a few of the dried minnows. And there's a few of the Blue Wilderness soft treats. I'm just curious to see what he likes and what he'll eat and uh, how he eats it. So I'm just gonna watch him hang out in here. Yeah, so that's, when he eats some of the dry food, he tends to swallow it wrong, so I'm just gonna watch and observe. I just gave Ditto another little mouse toy. I thought this one might be a little bit more realistic for him. He's kind of afraid of it. He's like, what did you do? You wanna play with the mouse? No? Okay, I'll leave.
It is 8.51 a.m. and I just gave Ditto his breakfast. He's having a scoop of the homemade raw food with water mixed in and also the gabapentin, the painkiller, and the Veriflux, the antibiotic. So I'll let him eat that. I'm gonna go feed the other cats. Then I'll come back, hopefully his plate will be empty and I'll give him the rest of his breakfast. He's been watching duck videos on the TV and uh, he seems to be enjoying just laying on this day sofa. I just gave Ditto the second half of his breakfast, which is another scoop of the homemade raw food. And he's getting one of the Stella and Chewy's chicken patties. And he's going straight for the homemade raw food. And I just wanted to mention that when I checked the security camera footage this morning, um, he spent pretty much the entire night uh, laying on the day sofa where he is now. Um, he did get down to use the litter box. And what was really good is that I saw him stretch this morning. So he stood up on all four of his legs and he stretched. He stretched his back up, you know, like a, almost like the typical Halloween cat pose. So it's good that he's starting to stretch because it means he's more comfortable. It also means he's feeling a little bit better because he's putting weight on his front leg. The other thing that I noticed is that when he did jump down from this day so far, he is definitely putting a lot more weight on the front leg. So it appears to be getting better for him. And we have to remember he did not have a painkiller last night. So he went through the night without any painkillers. So that could be a very good sign also that he's now stretching um, without a painkiller and he's putting more weight on the foot without a painkiller. So I am going to leave him here to finish eating. I'm gonna see if Hydrox wants some food and I need to uh, eat something myself. I'm always the last one. It's 9.15, I just came in to check on Ditto. Looks like he made a little bit of a mess here and I just saw him go underneath the day sofa. So I'm gonna clean this up and maybe what I'll do is put a new towel on here if he's if he stays underneath, uh, it'll give me a chance to change this towel. Okay, I just give him a fresh towel, and that'll be nice once he comes out from under the day sofa. I don't know where he went down there. It is 11.47 a.m., and I bought Ditto some flowers for his room. So we have some little sunflowers, and I put a few little carnations in the front. They should bloom. Everything should start uh, blooming soon. I have it in some water and some plant food. I'm going to put this on the shelf just to make this room a little bit cheerier and to raise the energy. Fresh flowers are really good at raising vibrations. I put it on the table next to the TV so he can look at it while he watches his videos. How you doing Ditto? You okay under there? He's been hanging out under here all morning. That's fine. Sometimes the cats like to hang out under here. It's a nice little private area for them. I just sprayed a little bit of this pet remedy spray on the towel. Maybe he's feeling a little bit anxious today, so maybe this will help calm him and draw him out. It's 2.15 p.m. Look at Ditto. <laughs> I just walked in the room. He's laying here with the toys. He's not playing with them, but he's laying with them. It's time for a squeeze up. Ditto, you want to squeeze up? I have a tuna churu in my hand. Want a tuna churu? Yeah, I got a churu for you. Okay. Here. You can have it. Okay, you don't want it? You want it on a plate? All right, he's afraid of it. I'm gonna hold the plate, I hold the plate. You eat it.
Okay. Good job. You want to get the little bath last bits? Sorry if it's blurry. It is 4 p.m. right now. I just came into Ditto's room with this brush. I let him smell it. I brushed him twice with it on his back, and then he he got up like he was laying down. So I put the brush down here so he could get used to it, and now he's going back. <laughs> he's going under the day sofa. Look at this. I just walked out of Ditto's room, and look at this. Who knocked over the cat tower? Simba, did you knock over that cat tower? Who knocked it over? Stella, did you knock it over? I think Simba might have knocked it over. I'll have to check the camera and see if it caught anything. It is 8.12 p.m. And I just gave Ditto some dinner. And I'm sitting on the couch while he's eating dinner. I'm sitting right next to him. So he's getting a scoop of homemade raw food with water mixed in. And I did put the gabapentin in it. He was hiding more today than he did yesterday. So I'm really giving it to him more for the anti-anxiety. Uh, effects that it has. I just want to see if I notice a difference tomorrow where he's hiding less again. Otherwise he's been doing super good. He's been very very cooperative. He has not been trying to get out of this room. Um, he really hasn't been meowing or howling at all. He's been pretty happy, actually. And it appears that he's putting more weight on his front leg and the paw. So that's good. Right, Ditto? Now he's a little he's a little nervous, so let me leave the room. I'll put the food down on his tray. I'm going to leave the room, and then I'll be back. I would also like to point out that all of the other cats have been extremely well behaved also. No one's been trying to bust into that room while I go uh, back and forth and in and out. Um, sometimes I might see Boo hanging out in the hallway looking at the door. That's because that used to be his room and uh, you know he's had to really sacrifice it for Ditto. So he's the one um, that misses it the most. But as far as the other cats, it's almost like, you know, they're like, okay. You know, Ditto's there, but we're okay with it. And Stella has been very gracious also. And out of everyone, Boo has just been such a gentleman. Right, Boo? You've been so kind to Ditto. You've been so nice to him. But that's how Boo is. Boo's a nice cat. Like, if, if there's any kind of sound of a cat or a kitten in distress, you know, Boo is so concerned over it. He's really a helper cat, right, Pooh? He's a fighter and a survivor, and at times he's a thug, but deep down he is a very nice person, and he's always concerned, always concerned about helping. Right, Boo? Right, Boo? Boo is a sweetheart cat. That's what he is. You're a sweetheart, Boo. Who says, don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. He likes to have a reputation of being a, a bit of a thug. He likes to throw his power around. But he's really a sweetie. Right, sweetie boo? Okay, sweetie boo. I'm going to give you lots of pets later. I got to finish up. I gotta finish my work today, boo. I'm gonna finish my work, then I'm gonna clean the kitchen, and then we'll hang out for a little while, right? It is 8.20 p.m., and I just gave Ditto the rest of his dinner, which is two more scoops of the homemade raw food with water mixed in, and 
that it was in the middle of the room standing there when I came in. Um, and I showed him the plate of food, but he still went under the day sofa. So he's hiding under the day sofa. I'm going to sit here a few minutes and see if he comes out. I've been sitting in this room for 10 minutes and he's still under the day sofa. So I'm going to leave and I'll let him come out and eat. Look at this. All I did was shut the light and turn the doorknob and he came right out. I'm still here, ditto. I'm going to leave anyway. I'll let him eat in peace. Hello, ditto. Okay, I just tried to pet him while he was eating. And he's not too happy with that, so I'll leave him alone. It's 10.30 p.m. And I just came into the room to give Ditto a snack. So I have some shredded chicken here because I made some chicken soup today. And he has a hard time eating the crunchies. The other cats are all having crunchies right now. So I'm going to put this on his uh, tray and let's see if he'll eat it. I just put it on his tray. I'm going to do what I did before and jiggle the doorknob. Maybe I'll come out and eat it. Yep, it worked again. I jiggled the door handle, opened it, shut it. And he came right out. I'm just going to watch him and see how he does eating the shredded chicken. He ate all of the chicken, so that was a really good snack for him. Okay, so this room is all set for him to get some sleep. I turned the TV off. Uh, the curtains are shut. There's a little night light on, which is making this room look a lot brighter than it is. I also have the exposure cranked on the camera. Right now he is under the day sofa. I'm just going to leave and he'll be set for the night. Good night, ditto.
watching this Lucky Farrell's video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you'd like me to post more videos, and please make sure to check out these other videos that were selected especially for you.